sustainable water supply and cleaning of our streets. The streets, the street lights must maintained and kept on at all times so that we enhance safety in our communities. But ladies and gentlemen, and Madam Speaker, through you, it doesn't help us to go to the municipality and cry, my street lights are out and that is why my child was raped. We will walk around and see that street light out for months and we will not report it. Is that not our responsibility to report that? We don't want our women and children to be scared to walk from their house to their neighbor because that is also imprisonment, denying, as we spoke yesterday, our human rights. The government of the ANC is long committed to these ideals and it is working hard to achieve them. Some of these commitments are still pervasive, not because of the government is refusing to deliver them, but because resources are needed for this com commitments. The, the government and us as individuals need to motivate our neighbors and our friends to pay for service delivery. We must pay our accounts that is outstanding so must the different government uh, departments as well. We have that responsibility. We have the water challenges, which have come from a long time. And as we fix the one side, the other side pops up. Thank you, MEC, for the time that you have put in to try and solve this problem. The high vacancy rate in our municipalities, Honorable Speaker, must be filled so that we cannot say that we are undercapacitized. But with through the proper channels and the right procedures, that we can also in that manner be part and, and achieve clean uh, audits. I see the red flag has gone up. Thank you. I thank you, Honourable Member, for the opportunity that I had this morning to voice my opinion. Thank you, Honourable uh, Smith. Honourable <laughs> D. Smith. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Achtbare Speaker, the stand of municipalities in the Free State can be compared with a sinkingship, with no captain on board, and no one who has leading or responsibility to for the situation that is being played. This sinkingship has ANC in great letters over it. The delivery of Free State municipalities is to a stillstand under the wind of the ANC. All the dorpen in the Free State is al for more than a year under water. In the wolf files, stroom and rivieren in loop der straten waar inwoners dagelijks moet rond beweeg. Ten spijt van Eskom se vernietigende beerdkrag, beloof municipaliteite se se skuld aan die kragvoorsiener miljarde rande en ervaar inwoners telkens bykomende kragonderbrekings. Honorable speaker, on top of this, numerous municipalities do not even have printers to issue to issue residents with their monthly utility bills. A handful of residents still pay for these non-existing services. While the majority expect everything for free and commit crimes such as illegal power connections without fear of being prosecuted, cable theft is also a huge concern and costs ta taxpayers billions of rands annually. Villas verwijdering vind selde tot nooit plaas nie en municipale paaie en dorpe is onbegaanbaar. Hierdie brandpunte veroorzaak dat eens functionerende dorpe nou soos varkokke lyk. Dit lyk echter of die ANC dit so verkies, want het blyk of geen poging hoegenaamd aangewend word om die verval van municipaliteite aan te spreek nie. Hierdie situasie sal dus nooit onder ANC bewind verbeter nie. Fondse wat vir dienstlevering begroot word, word eerder gesteel en aangewend vir die liekse leefstijl van topambtenare en politieke hoofde van municipaliteite. Boonop word ANC kaders, meer specifiek handlangers van die grootste plinderare in die geschiedenis van die vrystaat, genaamd Elias Sigewe.
Bello Magasule in hoop poste aangestel om te verseker dat een paar nulle by die bedrag wat hy reeds gesteel het gevoeg word. Honorable Speaker, as stated on numerous occasions, the Freedom Front Plus does not only point out areas where the ANC is dismally failing. We also have realistic and workable solutions for your problems, if only we start listening to them. Honorable Nkangisa, I know that you have a mammoth task on your plate, but sir, the plans and projects you have for failing municipalities in the Free State, as just stated in your address to this House, will stay mere plans for as long as you are surrounded by money-hungry, self-centered vultures who are only interested in enriching themselves. Without competence and the political will to change things around for the better in this department, I'm afraid that already sinking municipalities in this province will continue deteriorating until there's no point of return. At the voting stations later this year, people must do to the ANC exactly what the ANC has been doing to them for almost three decades, to totally disregard them. Ach, for speaker, the time for change has long been broken. The change has been decided by every choice. The change has been decided on the table where the Freedom Front Plus has been decided. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. MEC Mahansi. <laughs> no, thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. Mayor Sifuba, Honorable Premier, uh, Honorable Executive Members, Honorable Chief Whip, the Deputy Chief Whip of Legislature, Honorable Chair of Chairs, our young Nelson Mandela, yeah, yeah. Honorable Members of Legislature, Executive Mayors and Mayors, Marena Lidikosi, Bomme Lebontati. Honorable Speaker, Kinanore, Hobosokwa, Horore Rukwe, Kaparesa Pote, Budget Theatre in Lena Yakota, Ritsi Bar, Elisa Chabasaransu, Bo Runari Twante, Huranaki Ukai, Kilimona, Kilibosoko. Kamaras Visa Katamo Fita, Kalizon Lena Lekamun. Hari Ba Ahibaruna, Bapila Jolokadi Pista. How Hupola Horna, Pista Eshakai. Mutamay Swadi Pisano, Kanakale Apartheid. Mutamung se toss in a city see yo, Kanako eo. Mola Mandarateva Hore, Ba Ahi. Bafristata, Kapabona, Baranzu, Banebadula, Huleli, Ditropo, Banebadula, Matron, Akopanzen, Diturum, the Awenki Muso, Baba Hanya Pit. Tell it at Sabuan Katona, the Tell it at the end, and Kibono and Banebatabori, Kibona Felabatu. Rona de la mère, oui, tu sais, c'est mi cotine. Tatin la cajenne, oui, ma mona. Cassez bête. Sahori. Moussoa ANC, Hawaii Talito. Moussoa ANC, au Sebedite. Il est house au Kate, au total l'appel au Sebedite. The budget vote certainly provides hope to the masses of our people as well as our traditional leadership, who are directly impacted upon by the service offered by this department. It is a well-known fact that municipalities are at the core phase of service delivery, and thus the oversight of the Department of the Performance of Municipalities goes a long way in ensuring effective service delivery. It is also well known fact that our municipalities face the, the huge challenge, particularly during the difficult times of COVID-19, 
which has worsened the fiscal environment. Financial sustainability of our municipalities has become under enormous strain. Ability of communities to pay for services, which should be a strong revenue base for municipalities, has been worsened by the pandemic and depressed economic environment. As a result of these difficult times, infrastructure maintenance and upgrades has suffered more. Provision of basic service, services in many of our municipalities has become a more daunting challenge for our municipalities. However, while the challenges are numerous, there is also hope as provided by this budget vote. Honorable Speaker, as the Department of Sports, Arts, Culture and Recreation, we have a high expectations and faith in the ability of the Department of Cogta to lift our communities out of the depressed economic distress that we find ourselves in. We are saying so without, a, without any fear of contradiction, as this department is one of the departments that we have a direct link with regarding to rendering our own services. It is our view that municipal infrastructure grant can go a long way in enhancing facility management within municipalities. The building and maintenance of sports and recreation facilities in municipalities can provide the much needed economic upliftment for local communities. This is besides the nation building and social cohesion impact that sports and recreation has in that sports and recreation has in our communities. The challenges of drug abuse, teenage pregnancies, child and woman abuse, alcoholism, crime and other social ills can be eliminated through sports and recreation facilities in municipalities. The matter of land redistribution remains one of our foremost tasks that if attended to speedily can assist our communities, particularly rural communities, to uplift themselves out of their dire straits, out of their dire straits of economic depression. It is our belief that the communal land, communal land tenor bill will expedite the matter of land redistribution in rural areas to ensure access to land for those who need it, either for settlement or for production. Honorable Speaker, as the Department of Sports, Arts, Culture and Recreation, we also work very closely with the Department of Cogta in advancement of our traditions and customs. Through the Culture and Heritage Program, the two departments working together with Marena Lidikosi, as well as municipalities, we must continue to ensure the following programs are escalated. One, heritage sites. Two, naming and renaming of ge geographical areas street names, landmarks, and towns after traditional community and liberation stalwarts. Staging of indigenous games, which remind us about our history and cultural heritage. Staging of rural sports games to ensure that rural communities benefit from healthy living programs, as well as social cohesion and nation building initiatives. In October this year, the Department of Sports, Arts, Culture and Recreation will host the National Oral History Conference in Clarence. The conference is about archiving of historical records and memory. We will ensure that traditional leadership forms part and forms an important part of this conference so that they, they contribute ideas regarding protection of indigenous 
uh, knowledge and systems. Honorable Speaker, the other area through which my department works closely with the Department of Cocta is around the promotion of indigenous languages and heritages. Heritage, sorry. As we know, Sesotho is the most spoken language in the Free State. We'll continue to work closely with the Department of Traditional Leadership through the Sesotho Literature Museum and Language Services Unit to ensure that Sesotho as an indigenous language, which is most spoken, is preserved. Through the annual New Year celebration hosted at Basoto Cultural Museum in partnership with traditional leaders, we have been able to ensure that our customs and traditions are kept alive. The Basoto Cultural Village in itself is an important living museum which promotes these customs and traditions through out the year. Honorable Speaker, in conclusion, we continue to pin our hopes in the department's ability to turn things around in as far as challenges that confront municipalities. We will continue to work with the department to ensure the protection of our heritage, customs, and traditions under the guidance of traditional leadership. I wish the Honorable MEC Ngongoshe Muchapalong and his team all the best in his effort to confront the daunting challenges under these difficult economic times. It's not going to be easy, Honorable Ngongoshe. Boshla Swabona Hasibahuna, Impa Kamata, Fanyona. so, Kirata Hore, Jelimo Hasha, Obusa, Ibile Rere, Mo ANC Linting, Eta Busa of Kalam Renaja, so Atla, Tarajalo, ANC, give a future of Kalam Renaja, so Atla, Amanda. Honorable, you may address the house. Honorable members, I vote. Honorable members, eh, eh. we are still, we are still in the house. Uh, let me let me take this opportunity to greet uh, Speaker, Honorable Premier, uh, the committee running the Common Affairs of the Capital in the province, uh, Provincial Treasurer of EFF, Morena Mremolumpedi, Marenaka, Sichabaka Carrezo, Kifitisa Majume. Ndatengan yes, Neko Mamet, Kumamet got to it, got to the celebrate. How old department they are called, it's very the best brains. Can it be Wabona Halaraj, can it Daiko, Oshabilis, Disney World, to one at Popo Fella Lenagamato? Senna Zambia Mamikis. Uh, I will make a practical example. You sent HOD of your department in that Duma was sent to Malutia Pofu when it was put under administration with a hope that the situation will improve there. But what has transpired there is that before his intervention, 
the municipality was owing ESCOM 1 billion rand. After the intervention, when we tried to normalize it, Thomas Pala or Hank is now owing municipality. Honorable please just pause and take a seat. Uh, Honorable Dismit, your hand is up. Thank you, Speaker. I'm rising on a point of order. Speaker, is it parliamentary for the Honorable Msimonga to wear party regalia on his face? Or it's 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 unparliamentary. And I don't say anything because I did not notice. And thank you for bringing it to my attention, Honourable uh, Msimanga. Your party regalia cannot form part of of of, of this uh, house. Hi. <laughs> yeah, Speaker, but Angela now. Let me attend to the issue here. After intervention of Honorable your Simanga, HOG, who's part another... of the best brains? Honorable Simanga, there is a point of order. Honorable Meko. Speaker, thank you very much. The issues of the mask are very important. And if you do not have a mask, it is illegal. In other words, you must be arrested. A member of parliament cannot come to the sitting without a mask. Your ruling is that that mask is wrong and must be taken out of the sitting of the house. Now, if he does not have a mask, he can't stand here and address the sitting of the legislature. Speak. He must go and look for the mask and only then he'll come back and address the house. Thank you very much. You must also put yours on, uh, Honorable Tabomek. Um, proceed, Honorable Simang. You have removed the 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 logo. Uh, of yeah, the speaker. Party. No, yeah. no amount of distraction. Don't answer. Well, Continue, Honourable Msima. Yeah, I'm saying, Speaker, na So what I'm saying is that Honourable Duma, uh, HOD Duma, after his intervention, Escom was now owed five billion rand. I don't know that's black excellence of Wanga on uh, HOD. But more than that, uh, MEC, but more than that, where your department has intervened in terms of section 139 throughout the province, there are problems. The situation, all those municipalities has moved from that ways. And majority of those municipalities, if not all, are dragging their feet to submit AFS uh, documents to Auditor General so that he can formulate an independent audit, audit opinion. Its effect is there in you know, Auditor General's report. I don't know when, when you are talking about that, what are you talking about? And you, I think ANC has made apartheid and uh, COVID-19 your two blue-eyed boys. One, even before COVID-19, municipalities in free state had already collapsed. It's a fact. So blaming apartheid, it will not help us. You lack maintenance plan. When you do not have a maintenance plan, obviously the infrastructure will collapse. Let me make an example. Here in Butsabe, on a little road, again, to Kim Muso, African National Congress, but on Ajoala, how can a caralication your Losheva? Yes, before 1994. On Ajoala, how can a Kimmo, who saw one other man, the man, more than an elite high road. So you can't blame apartheid. When you do not have maintenance plan, you do not have maintenance plan. And this thing of blaming apartheid is going to catch up with you. Because even then, during apartheid, uh, even before apartheid, when this. Uh, uh, British, it took them about 25 years to 30 years. There were Africaners who were empowered. There were serious service delivery in Ebon Island ground level. That cannot be said with your government. So you cannot hide yourself behind apartheid forever. Collection rate. The problem with collection rate 
is that you do not have a proper billing system as a, a province. All municipalities in the province do not have a proper billing system. statement services. That's where your central university of technology That's where your U of So that's where you must use them for those people. But you can't tell people to go and pay services when yourself, your department, and provincial departments in general are owing Mangawu more than 1.3 billion. Payment of services starts with you. If your whole department cannot pay services, why are you expecting other people to pay services? Why should they pay services when leadership cannot lead by example? Today you are complaining that uh, you are putting Mangaung under administration because of lack of uh, funds. But the problem of funds in Mangaung is your department and other provincial departments. With that 1.3 uh, billion, I think the problems of Mangaung will be solved to a certain extent. The other problem that we are having is that money meant for provident funds of workers is being chowed, misdirected, like Malihama Zimba. So you find yourself in a very awkward situation where in a municipality like Muhuka is owing workers more than, more than 60 million rent which was supposed um, to be channeled Honourable, to provident funds. Honorable Simon, can you please pause and take a seat? No. Honorable Smith. Honorable Speaker, on a point of order, you've ruled in the beginning of this sitting about the word chow. Did I understand correctly or didn't I ask it? It's not allowed. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. On Honorable... Um, uh, uh, Honorable Smith, uh, the ruling was not saying the word was not allowed, but it said honorable members must use the language that um, uh, reflects the decorum of the house. It's not necessarily uh, not allowed. It's not a swearing word or an offensive word. Proceed, honorable member. Uh, thank you very much, Speaker, once more. So I want to attend to issue of prepaid meters. You are, you, you are not telling people that they are prepaid meters. They are not telling people that they are not telling people that they are not telling Karl Marx or is not the consciousness of a man that determines his being, instead the material conditions that you find yourself with in. Um, Honorable what's Chair of Chairs, what's the point of order? Madam Speaker, is it uh, Honorable Member, the leader of the Economic Freedom Fighters? He said the African government provided service delivery. So it is out of order of a member who's fighting for land that was taken by the same government of the African the same government that brought segregations, poverty and starvation. It's wrong for him to say that it was a service pro, uh, uh, delivery. And lastly, it against the regulations of this country that a person, once you have put a mask on the, on the other side, and attracted the gems. Later on in this house, you turn the mask upside down, you attach those gems to your neck, and you start to speak about the African as being the good practice for service delivery. No, Thank you. Honorable Chair, the, the reference that the Honorable Member has made is not unparliamentary. There is nothing wrong if, if that's, that's a debate, if he feels like doing that. There is nothing wrong. Proceed, Honorable Simang. Honorable Simang, proceed. Stop with your, your comments. 
They are eating on my time, speak. Uh, prepaid meters. Majority of our people, the reality is that they cannot afford prepaid meters because majority of them But to you, uh, honorable Nanisa, you can afford prepaid meter. More so, okay, indigenous policies. Say no more, the apply the mass spelling. You are left with serious package. Yeah, but to apply them for indigenous. It's a problem. Uh, I'm very happy that uh, Honorable Mahasa now, Ohona Okena Lainia EFF. But I feel more naming board is water camp after Winnie Mandela. It's an insult to our people. While failing to name these towns after our heroes, statues on Nelson Mandela, Kisan, Sidula, Lidi, Tue, Nidi, Tabe. While Sir President Brand still at the middle of the town, you must really be an embarrassment to Nelson Mandela and his generation. So, how old is the house? 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 The reality must be told. These kind of houses that our people body build the LONK government, the current government of the ANC. What I'm saying, my fellow honorable members, is that how to work with us all out of the way, in fact, to a job out of the way, how to work with the honorable members, who meet to a kid, he posts signs, there in Bloomfontein, 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 up until you can get out of the way. But majority of the people who are going to be in the way, but the people who are going to be in the way, keep Bloomfontein. Why? It's because post signs still. These are some of the things that we must change and we must be decisive. I'm happy that the mayor of Mukaka is here. Mukaka is named after Kruan Stad. Kruan in the Ilepere Yasarel Silas. So Kruan Stad is named after a horse of Yasarel Silas. It remains a colonial area that needs to be changed. You must name it after Zetar Mahaban, you must name it after the, revo the revolutionaries of this revolution that you are claiming to be pushing. Not only that, we can move as far as Friede. Friede is a peace accord of those who are excluding black people. Divestop is named after Christiana Divest, who negotiated for Union of South Africa in exclusion of black people. These are some of the towns that needs to be changed in favor of our people. As long as this government cannot go that far in realizing this vision, we are up uh, for a mockery. So we are not going to do pop. So what I'm talking about is that you are going to There was what used to be called Petersburg. Why today say Petersburg? It's because those signs, post signs there, he to sit to go to a job back where I can go to look one. That's why I ring a rest of Petersburg, sell me a little bit. We know that Petersburg is a look one. Free state certainly change. Even the free state is a little bit. Because the phrase that the free state is the Afrikaners. This was used to be called the Soto. They were celebrating defeat. They have more than a mushroom. Zastron is named after the uh, wife of President Brand. Brand, Lady Brand after uh, another wife of President Brand. Brandford is named after Brand. There's a person, Anna Leleki Samushwe, who is a street. We need to change things. This is the Bonahala, the Beliberated, or Najwale, Ritswana, the Batuba Bailens, Nepe, Profile Pictenia, how in Palace Nepe's a rapist. Thank you very much. Um, Honorable uh, Mr. Mohale.
Eta. I can't get up for it on Tatuna. Honorable Speaker, Miss <laughs> Monique, <laughs> uh, Honorable Deputy Speaker, the Premier of the Province, uh, Ms. Sintombella, colleagues in the executive and in the, in the House, Baita Pele, Boshiba. Kahare ho ho na haolo holo mare na ho ya kame khaselo ya bona jalo jalo bo majoro le ditwatsa makhotla fapaneng a metsi all officials with different ranks but most important the people of the free state honorable mc ngangisa let me start by saying there's no power for change greater than the community discovering what it cares about. The people have the power. All we have to do is to awaken the power in them. You presented your budget speech a few days after we have commemorated the Sharpville massacre of that has happened many decades ago. In honoring the fight for democratic South Africa, Human Rights Day, we pay homage to all of those who fought and lost their lives in the struggle for freedom. Comrade Chris Haini captured it correct when he said, I never want us to spare myself because I feel there are people who are no longer around and died for this struggle. What right do I have to hold back, to rest, to preserve my health, to have time with my family, when there are people who are no longer alive, when they sacrificed what is precious, which is called life. Your budget speech reaffirms the commitment of the African National Congress to our people. It further reiterates our belief as the African National Congress that local government forms part of the overall socio-economic transformation agenda and is the sphere of government that is closest to the people. The service delivery agenda of local government is key to achieve a better life for all the communities. And the government program of improving the performance of local government as has been launched through Back to Basic it was also reaffirmed by the 54th National Conference of the ANC in Nazareth. And it reaffirmed that there needs to be, that the government needs to be brought closer to the people, that there needs to be fast tracking of delivery of quality basic services to the people. And at the center of it, there needs to be an improved financial management, but most importantly, employing capable and qualified staff and dealing decisively with fraud and corruption. At the same time, we need to ensure that the local government systems are accountable or they foster accountability and transparency. And lastly, that there has to be a clear consequence management for poor performance and the political leadership must be capable and provide oversight. Honorable Nangisa, your budget speech gave us hope as the people of the free state because your department is also tasked with the mammoth of a task which is also finding expression in the Freedom Charter, the very first one, that the people shall govern. Your department is leading a task to ensure that the people determines their own leadership, that the people are able to raise their views. Therefore, throughout the years, since the dawn of democracy, the Department of Cocta has indeed ensured that 
wherever our people are, no matter how struggling uh, they, may, they may be, the effect of the matter, gone are the days where few wise men were seated in their little corners there and determined who must lead the people. Because with the dawn of democracy, indeed our people are governing. Our people determine who must lead them. And those that qualify, they indeed are able to stand for the election. We are proud that at least one of those, or among those Freedom Charter aspirations, the very first one we have been enjoying for the past 26 or 27 years. Madam Speaker, it is evidence that the Department of Cocktail, under stewardship of MEC Nangisa, is committed to improve quality of service to our people, filling up the top critical posts in the municipalities, which has translated into the stability in the administration of the municipalities. There will therefore be no excuse for service delivery deadlock because there are now capable men and women who will institutionalize performance management systems. The speech clearly indicates our commitment as the ANC government to ensure that we shall continue to invest in the infrastructure development. We have said that we want to build the free states that we want by ensuring that we stimulate the local economy and ensure that municipal revenue collection becomes a success. It is not an easy role. Nobody said it would be, but the ANC government will leave no stone unturned. Ms. Ngangisa, it becomes very important that we contextualize the reference that we make when we say we are dealing with the backlog. It is not an excuse as many comes to this podium to try and score cheap political points by saying we're making an excuse. We will have to make it very easy for them to understand. The first point that we need to bring is to them is that the entire budget that it is used now, which is shared amongst all the different sections of our community. During apartheid, it was only used for the very few, for the less than 30% or less than 20%. It was more than enough. That is why in the towns or in the suburb, there was enough money for the, to provide for the roads, electricity, and to a certain extent, they even used to be the savings because nothing was going to the township. At the current moment, that little amount of allocation, it has to be shared with everyone. But we must also indicate to them that when we came in, in 1994, we did not do the direct reversal of that which is happening. We did not take the budget and concentrate it 100% in the township. We continue to even maintain all of those areas because they even understand better now when they come and stand there that there's a need for a maintenance of the existing infrastructure. We have done it better. We continue to do it with that which was existing and it was only attributed to them while trying to deal with the battle. Honorable Nanisa, we need to remind them that when you go to our township, there is literally nothing. When we came in in 1994, there were not even simple gravel roads. No one could even drive in those roads, let alone that there were no tar roads. So you can imagine that if you can't even afford a mere simple maintenance of a road where there is no tar road, how much money it will cost you uh, uh, to do a proper road in terms of the tars and the pavement and so on? We must remind them that as things are now, we have not even arrived at half of that work that we need to do insofar as the township roads are concerned. In the cities, we still have the pavements. In the cities, we still have the towers. But in the township, you even struggle. And that will, not, that will not even take a decade or so because majority of the money, part of it is, it still has to service those areas which were, uh, uh, were, were suburbs or were whites only. So it is very disingenuous to come and say, the ANC has seen the three decades to have changed the lives of the people. The local economic development is an important instrument that provides local governments, the private sector, non-profit organizations, as well as communities, 
with an opportunity to work together to improve local economies. We therefore want to urge our communities that they should meet our municipalities halfway. Those who can afford to pay, they should do so to help municipalities with the deadlock of service delivery. We urge local businesses to pay their levies and ensure that they pay electricity and water bills on time to avoid the deaths that leads to the collapse of the businesses. Madam Speaker, the ANC government is hard at work and will not be shaken by a toothless opposition that seeks relevance and use our people's frustration as a tool to seek votes. 2021, in 2021, we once more want to warn our people that they must not be misled by the parties that masquerade as their liberators. While in essence, they are the ones that clearly demonstrate that they take our people for a ride. They forget about our people throughout the period of four years. And on the eve of elections, they bring their hundred runs and buy their votes. They come and then tell them that they are the better government. Yet they know if they were to allow the people to think independently, they will not be able to convince them. That is why they express their conditions and give them hundred runs thinking that our people are stupid because you only eat that 100 rand in a day. After elections, they know more forthcoming. So our people need to be very clear that we actually have hyenas which must carate as the sheep. So we must be very clear about them. And I like it because our people have always voted them out. They have never given them a chance to taste power. They have rejected them even before they could even wants to take chances with them in governance. Honorable Speaker, we want to applaud the departments through the leadership in the process of the new model called District Development Model. Out of this model, we have already seen major improvements that are made and the serious crisis because they were to bring all the different spheres of governments together, where it has become very easy for the private sector and investors to come and invest much of the capital that our uh, uh, local sphere needs. We have realized the number of developments where it used to be very difficult to come and, and, and invest in form of, uh, of industries. It used to take long when we want a piece of land because the other certain government organs after that, other organs have to take that time. But when now everyone is under one roof, the planning becomes joint, it becomes very easy. In conclusion, Honorable Speaker, let me quote Comrade Steve Biko, who once said, being black is not a matter of pigmentation, but being black is a reflection of a mental attitude. So I'd like to say to our people, they must not be discouraged by all these prophets of doom, Honorable Nganisa, who always wants to characterize them as bad because they are black, thinking that poverty is only meant for them. But our positive, right attitude as the free status will indeed help us to overcome the current problems that we are trying to deal with. This is not their problems. These are not the problems that are created by nature. These are not the problems that are created by the ANC. But they were man-made problems by the previous government, but we will continue to soldier on. And as such, we support this budget vote of COCTA. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Dunderson. Honorable Jankosin, you may address the house. Why is this not changed? Honorable, uh, Honorable uh, Clean Hands, you may address the house. Declare 
that the ANC have achieved their goal of radical economic transformation in the Free State. The ANC has managed to transform the Free State from a prosperous province where most people had work into a wasteland of misery, poverty, unemployment and hunger. A province where thousands um, of people have no water to drink and where childhood you? stunting is Honourable a growing Plainance. disaster. Please, please pause. Could you please correct the, 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 uh, the clock? <laughs> just, just wait, I, I want them to, to correct the clock. Um, thank you, Honorable Clenians. You may start. <clears throat> thank you, Speaker. As I said, the ANC have achieved their goal of radical economic transformation. The ANC has managed to transform the Free State from a prosperous province where most people had work into a wasteland a province where thousands of people have no water to drink and where childhood stunting is a growing disaster, a province where thousands of people go to bed hungry. Speaker, MEC in Kangisa declares that the district development model is the new vehicle which will be used to improve service delivery. The poor misguided MEC is dreaming. MEC on your watch, virtually all the municipalities in the Free State have collapsed. And while you did have the power to intervene in terms of Section 139 and stop that collapse, you did nothing. Section 138 of the Municipal Finance Management Act specifies the criteria to assess, to use in the assessment of serious financial problems in municipalities. Provincial Treasury has reported that almost every municipality in the Free State fits those criteria and must be placed under administration. You, sir, and the EXCO did nothing. The Auditor General reports that 60% of monies received by municipalities do not even reach the bank account. Yet you see nothing wrong and do nothing. 50% of the water which has undergone the costly purification process in the Free State is lost through leaks, yet you do nothing. 80% of the sewerage treatment plants in the Free State are dysfunctional, allowing untreated sewerage to flow into our rivers, streams and dams, and yet you see nothing wrong and do nothing. Yesterday you said that the sewerage pouring in Mashaing was as a result of apartheid. But sir, I must remind you that it was a council 
run by the ANC, which appointed the contractor who failed to properly implement the contract. The unemployment rate in the Free State now stands at almost 34%, while the expanded rate is over 40%. Yet you see nothing wrong and do nothing. Are we then to assume that the provincial government also sees nothing wrong in our municipalities? This provincial government is blind to the suffering of our people. This provincial government condones the looting and mismanagement in our local governments. Through your lack of action, MEC, this is the message that the people are getting. Honorable Speaker, the Premier in her State of the Province address spoke about many projects and programs which Free State Government will use to create jobs and grow businesses. Honourable Premier, all of these projects are located within failed municipalities where water supply and electricity are a rare luxury. I can therefore confidently say that the chance of these succeeding is about zero. All over the province, we see projects which could not get off the ground because they are situated within failed municipalities. And I speak here as an example of the special economic zone in Maluti Apufung, which for 10 years now could not get off the ground because they cannot supply bulk water and bulk electricity. Until municipalities are fixed and are well governed, and able to basic services, including bulk water, electricity, and decent roads, we will continue to go backwards. We will continue the radical economic transformation into oblivion. With the best will in the world, governments cannot employ all the people in the province, almost one million of whom are now in need of a job. We need entrepreneurs, both big and small, who are able and willing to invest in opening businesses. Whether they be micro enterprises or large factories, they all need the same things. They need reliable electricity, reliable water, and sound municipal infrastructure. They need good roads and a safe environment. Without those things, our people in the Free State will remain destitute and in despair. Speaker, again, I say, where municipalities are failing and we have the criteria to measure that, provincial or national government must intervene. And the Section 139 intervention power cannot be used for political and factional purposes or to cover up mismanagement and maladministration. That power must be used to protect our people and our businesses from a corrupt or incompetent municipality. Honorable Speaker, let us look at the use of Section 139 in Maluti Apufung. In February of 2018, pressured by community protest about a corrupt and totally dysfunctional council and pressure from the DA, Premier Ntumbela announced a Section 139-1B provincial intervention, which was endorsed by Minister Zweli Mkise, who was then the Minister of COCTA. Provincial COCTA had to spend 20 million on security in order to take over the administration due to death threats and intimidation. Clearly, the MAP leadership did not want to let go of the person strings where they had been eating for years. After the resignation of Mayor Vusi Chabalala and the election of a new mayor, the ANC suspended 14 of their councillors, thus rendering council impotent. In June of 2019, MAP adopted an illegal and unfunded budget National Treasury stopped the equitable share payments, meaning staff and councillors could not be paid. This prompted a negotiation between national and provincial government, 
whereby a joint national provincial section 1391B strengthened intervention was announced. In August of 2019, a new team of administrators under the skilled Mr. Lefatola arrived to manage the administration. Slowly, three years of financial statements were submitted to the Auditor General. Billing, which had not happened for two years, could again start. Monthly payments were made to dismissed. Corrupt contracts were terminated and investigations launched into, amongst others, illegal prepaid electricity vendors. The people of MAP began to see the light. There were the beginnings of a properly managed municipality. Systems were being re-established and order was being restored. However, as we saw in this legislature, many ANC members were unhappy about the new good governance in the municipality. Some said, these administrators must go. Meanwhile, the administrators in their closed out reports revealed how they had been subjected to death threats and intimidation by the Troika, being the mayor, the speaker and the chief whip of council. These tactics were being used to force the administrators to appoint certain contractors or pay illegal contracts or not suspend illegally appointed and corrupt individuals. In April 2020, under the careful watch of MEC in Kangisa, Council illegally appointed a new MM and CFO deployed by the MEC. These immediately award, awarded themselves a 40% pay increase even before their contracts were signed. The writing was on the wall. It was clear the ace faction in the province was gaining the upper hand under the manipulations of the MEC. Mr. Lefatola and most of his team left and the MEC then appointed Mr. Goliath as the administrator. Mr. Goliath testified in the NCOP about his life of hell in MAP how his life was in danger and how he was forced to take illegal actions by the Troika. By the 1st of June 2020, the MEC revealed that he had lifted the administration in MAP, effectively handing the municipality back to the looters. The MEC said this was decided due to the tremendous progress in MAP even though almost none of the initial terms of reference had been met. Immediately thereafter, ESCOM attached the bank accounts of MAP in an effort to recover the six billion owed. That six billion had been accumulated over a period of five years. In 2014, Maluti Apufung owed ESCOM about 400 million. All the vehicles and computers were attached by Rural Maintenance PTY Limited in an effort to get the 34 million still owed to them. And SARS attached the MAP water bank account to recover debts. In August of 2020, President Ramaphosa gazetted an order to the Special Investigating Unit to investigate Maluti Apufung Municipality starting from January 2012. Meanwhile, Minister Sizulu, who had allocated a vast amount of funding to MAP for emergency water infrastructure projects, was never informed that the municipality was no longer under administration or that the grant funding was being paid into a frozen bank account, meaning that contractors on these critical projects could not be paid. Honorable Speaker, <coughs> This is how the provisions of Section 139 are manipulated by the ANC in the Free State. Tremendous progress indeed, MEC. 
Meanwhile, many areas of Kwakwa and Interbaswe have had no water for months. I went to Sefikaneng village in Kwakwa, which has had no tap water since 2015. Jojo tanks were brought there, but they were only filled twice. So they've been standing empty for months. Residents must scramble down the hill to get drinking water at a small spring or wash their washing in the stream. Half of Harry Smith is currently without electricity because the T3 mini substation exploded and there's no money to procure a new one. Service providers are also now refusing to do work or supply goods to the municipality because they were not paid for the last time. This is how much the ANC care for the human rights of our people. They are too busy positioning themselves for enrichment for themselves and their cadres to care. Tremendous progress indeed. Speaker, we see the same games playing out in other municipalities which are placed under administration or taken out of administration for purely political and factional reasons. Mangaung, which is at war with its entities of Centlik and Bloomwater, while the MM interferes with the administration team. Masilion Yana, which was under administration for years, but still cannot ensure water or electricity to the community. Mitsimaolo, which owes ESCOM the least of all free state municipalities, what was placed under administration for political reasons, because council is run by a coalition. Services to the people is clearly the last thing on the ANC's mind. Honorable Speaker, the people are sick and tired of this nonsense. The people are revolting against ANC-run municipalities. In many places, we see ratepayers organizations, residents associations, unemployed people's organizations, business forums, going to court to get relief. And the courts are granting orders against government. All spheres of government have failed the people. Local government has collapsed, while provincial and national government are either unwilling or unable to intervene or paralyzed by factional interests. Communities are being granted permission to manage their own services. What an indictment on the ANC. What an admission of guilt by the three spheres of government. Speaker, this is why I say the free state has been radically transformed by the ANC. Not only are people living in a devastated wasteland created by the ANC, but even the democracy has been corrupted at a local level, thus forcing the people to court to get relief from this useless government. 2021 is truly a chance for the people to vote for a party Honorable which has proved. Honorable withdraw the term useless is offensive. Withdraw. Withdraw what? Withdraw the term useless government. That is offensive. Uh, this pathetic government. Thank you. Honorable uh, Klein Hans, withdraw offensive words. Uh, speaker, I withdraw offensive words. 2021 is truly a chance. Honorable, for the Honorable Klein Hans, don't dismiss me. Do as I'm requesting you, do not dismiss me. You are using the word useless. You change it for pathetic. I'm saying we draw those words. Don't dismiss me. Mr. Speaker, I withdraw the words useless and pathetic. Thank you. 2021 is truly a chance for the people to vote for a party which has proved 
that it knows how to govern for the people. The DA can transform the province back into one of prosperity and opportunity for its people. To end, again, make this free state a place to be proud of for all its people. Thank you. Honorable, Honorable Chabalala, Honorable Shufi. Shanganani calling upon the African people to bury the demon of racism and tribalism and face the challenges before them. The following year, the people of South Africa responded to the call of dispatching delegates to Bloemfontein. The delegates included esteemed traditional leaders such as Solomon Kadinuzulu, uh, uh, Munziwa of the Barolong, uh, Lewanag, Lewanika of the Lozi of Zambia, Litsie the second of Lesotho, uh, Labotsi Beni from Swaziland, Dalinyembo of the Abatembu, Sikukuni of the Bapedi, and, and Hama from Botswana. King Dalinyembo provided 115 cattle for the occasion in 1912. This time, Abatembu following the Dutch tradition have provided 50 cattle for the centenary. The Congress of the Traditional Leaders of South Africa provided um, to... Honorable Chief, please pause. Honorable Jungleson. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. I just want to find out if the Honorable Chief Whip will take a question about how corruption destroyed no. Mepande. Honorable Jungleson. Honorable Jungleson. Honorable Jungleson. Honorable Jungleson, what you just did is out of order. You it's are what not... the ANC members did yesterday, Honorable. Honorable Junkelson, don't do that. You know what you are doing is wrong. You were not even interested in asking him to take a question. You just wanted to make a comment because you just immediately handed over the mic. Do not do that. Do not do that. Don't do that. Proceed, Honorable Chief Whip. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, in his opening speech at, uh, uh, at the formation of the ANC, Pixley Isaka Seme said, we have discovered that in the land of the birth, Africans are treated as hewers of wood and drawers of water. The white people of this country have formed what is known as the Union of South Africa, a union in which we have no voice in the making of laws and no part in their administration. We have called you, therefore, to this conference so that we can together devise ways and means of forming our national union for the purpose of creating national unity and defending our rights and privileges, close quote. The task the founders set themselves, their, their movement was to defeat the white minority domination and to transform South Africa into a common home for all of its people, regardless of their historical origins, their race, color, culture, or religion. It has to be a common home in which all citizens would be equal, enjoy equal rights, including the right to vote and to determine their, dis their destiny. I must emphasize that as a, as a custodian of our cultural values, the institution of traditional leaders occupies a strategic position in our society to provide the necessary leadership in the critical area of the moral regeneration of our nation. Our government has, has over the years, developed sound working relations with the sound of traditional leaders. We, we remain committed to strengthening this relation and to do whatever it is necessary, Honorable MEC, to enable our traditional leaders to play their role in the society. In 1998, Honorable Speaker, President Nelson Mandela declared, and I quote, traditional leaders in our country has lived for centuries and will continue to do so. It is our pride uh, as the people of South Africa 
and a tradition that cannot be devoted from us. Traditional leaders now occupy a critical place in the great partnership of all sectors whose joint efforts will make our country just and prosperous. Close quote. Madam Speaker, let me take this moment to pass my sincere condolences to the royal family of the King Goodwill Zulitini of the Zulu Nation. It has been almost over a week since the passing of the great Zulu monarch, a visionary leader whose cultural beliefs and identity forged the national unity and economic development of the province of KwaZulu-Natal and the entire country. The king became the eighth king of the Zulu nation, succeeding his late father, King Cyprian Beguzulu Solomon. May the planted soul of the king continue to guide these people to the greatness. Honorable Madam Speaker, the harsh reality of the COVID-19 has highlighted the, the hardship uh, in, uh, in, 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 in today's uh, uh, living. Our everyday realities echo the crisis of our people on a daily basis who faced with this harsh socio-economic conditions. Honorable Speaker, it is the same cry, the same desperation that should inspire most service delivery endeavors by the ANC-led government. It remains our responsibility to better the living conditions of our people. This is the only thing that we must fight for. Honorable Speaker, uh, from improving the living conditions of our people, we need to remind ourselves that the local government is very much important. Local government is important in forging broad-based social collusion co co for the betterment of people's lives. <clears throat> that is why, Honorable MEC, we must act with a spring lightness in decisive demenia to ensure that our municipalities are responsive to the need of the 4IR, that our municipalities are innovative, sustainable, viable, and outcome-based in their quest to improve the material conditions of our people. Uh, uh, Honorable Speaker, this parliament should remain committed in supporting and strengthening municipalities so that they can be financially viable and sustainable. Honorable MEC, the great part of uh, this initial enhancing the revenue generation capacity of this municipality is very important. That is why, honorable members, we need to assist our municipalities to develop revenue generate, generating strategy. We ought to look and employ new funding models to improve the growth and sustainability of our municipalities. Honorable Speaker, the honorable MEC Nangi Sahore. Bushokawaole Honorable Speaker, this parliament need to keep in mind that service. Honorable um, uh, Chabalala, can you please pause and take a seat? I just want to, to remind the honorable members of this house, especially uh, Honorable Msimang of Rule 35-2. Every member shall bow to the presiding officer in passing to or from his or her seat. I've been watching you every time you are in the house you just go out and come back as you please. You must register your exit and, and register your entrance so that the presiding officer could notice. It is our rules, honorable members. Let's respect them. Thank you. Proceed, honorable chief. Whip. Must talk to honorable speak. Honorable speaker, this parliament needs to keep in mind that service delivery is not 
is not on low down. We cannot compromise on service delivery. And this parliament will remain to hold the executive accountable. The great leader of Burkina Faso, Thomas Sankara, reminds us that, and I want to quote, we cannot carry out fundamental change without certain degree of madness. In this case, it comes from non-conformity, the courage to turn your back on the old formulas, the courage to invent the future. It took the madness man of yesterday for us to be able to act with extreme clarity today, close quote. In essence, Honorable MEC, I am calling on all of us to be madmen of the epoch, to create new formals and ways deals with the challenges of today's, so that the generation of tomorrow will be able to prosper without having to start closing the vacuum we would have left during our time. Honorable Speaker, we, 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 Honorable Speaker, the will of the people in our province is manifested through the ANC attaining power to government. The character of the ANC is derived from the principle of freedom charter that the people shall govern. Honorable MEC, the ANC calls on the department to continue working together with the traditional leaders in its quest to right the wrongs of the minority white regime, which is apartheid. And we will never ever stop talking about apartheid because apartheid existed more than 300 years and we only existed only 25 years in power. So you can't compare apple and banana. A regime which sought to destroy the very soul of the majority blacks, a regime which did everything in its power to trap our people of their human dignity, a regime which used force and manipulation to take the land of our forebearers, a regime which declared that black people will govern the country to the ground. Honorable Speaker, we need to work as a unit to radically undo what this regime has done for thousands of years. With that said, let's, let's remind those that, uh, that ignore the importance of our traditional leaders. As it was alluded in the speech of the, the Honorable MEC in terms of Section 17, and then uh, Honorable MEC. Honorable Speaker, the objective principle of the ANC led government is to create a developmental state that will provide effective basic service for our people, a state with capability to take forward the far reaching agendas of national economic development. This is the main goal of the state transformation as articulated in the ANC strategy and tactics. This will put the involvement of our people at the center of this process. The ANC state agenda is to transform the lives of our people by any means necessary, by any means necessary. And that is why, Honorable Speaker, the legacy of Ntate Isma Khashule will still remain. When the Operation Shasela Haikawa Azangebe came from 2009, I'm sure free state could have not been where it is today because of that day is Mahashul. And that is why we will never shy away from the good things that he has done. You can go to Jagas Fontaine, you can go to Kronstadt, you can go to Cornelia, you can go to Makekung in Kwakwa, you can go into many areas because of Operation Shasela. That is why we have the ANC today led government. And we want to say to you that there is Mahashule. Relax, and keep up doing the good job. Intens intervention in the municipalities under administration. Madam Speaker, there are municipalities that are under intervention in terms of Section 139 and also in terms of Section 106. And we want to urge to the MEC to ensure that all our municipalities are able to attain good governance. And I know that uh, the likes of Bumasiloni and Amafube, Malutapofu, and many more other municipalities, we are still struggling. Even the Mangawu Metro, and I want to emphasize this one, Honorable MEC, we are not going to be happy when our own Metro is not functioning correctly. As 
the committees of parliament, we will ensure, together with Honorable Metlin Hans, it is our responsibility to play an oversight. We must not come in the parliament and grandstand. If things are wrong, we have an opportunity which is protected by the constitution of this country in terms of chapter six, where we must go out and do the oversight and take everybody who has done wrong to account. So we must never ever come here and do the grandstanding when we have powers to go to municipalities. If Chabalala Vusi was the mayor and Chabalala Vusi has done corruption, it is within the right of this constitution and the, 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 the law agency to take the responsibility. It can't be correct that we are always being, uh, 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 being reminded by other people how corrupt we are. I mean, all of us, I'm sure, in our own respective rights, we are all corrupt. It's just that the terminology that corruption has been used. Honorable members, it is still a thorny issue of how uh, our municipalities are still working, but we just want to say to the Honorable MEC, uh, uh, and the intervention that has been there in Inketuana, we just want to say we want to see our municipality functioning very well. Honorable Speaker, we call on Honorable Premier and Honorable MEC for Police uh, and Roads and the Day Machining to start looking into these criminal actions and those who are found orchestrated must be brought to book. Many cases have been opened in different municipalities where uh, the, 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 the power stations have been sabotaged. More Arona, the Velfu, the Dulan, the Robua, Impahusna, any action in Kuang, and that on its own. That's why we are calling upon the Premier and the MEC, Wasi Police. Those cases must be revived, and we will ensure we force the Portfolio Committee of Police to look into those cases because so many people are sabotaging this government led of the ANC and we are not doing anything. Because the very same police, the case that is wrong. That is why we are calling upon that. Honorable Speaker, the ANC stresses the need for progressive partnership by government. We welcome the decision of partner department to establish a memorandum of agreement. Uh, that has been signed between the DBSA, Honorable MEC, and COCTA. And we want to ensure that we, 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 we look into that uh, relationship that is going to change the lives of our people. And uh, we, 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 Honorable uh, Speaker, we have to then formalize a social compact with the private business uh, or business communities, civil society and government against poverty and underdeveloped, uh, especially in rural municipalities. Honorable MEC, we need to provide the, the relief for communities in distress. This will add significant meaning to the work of the government. And this is one way the ANC-led government will implement a collective responsibility where all sectors in our society are involved in changing the lives of our people. In conclusion, honorable members, we need to create a local government that works even better for the people of the free state. In order for this to happen, we need to hold accountable for, uh, to, for their, to their actions. We will need to decentralize support to municipalities through local government specialists and such initiatives like your the memorandum of understanding to improve coordination and facilitation in the resolution of service delivery issues. Honorable Speaker, we need to build the capacity of our local municipalities by enhancing skills development, and this will go a long way in building a sustainable developmental state. Capacity building goes as far as capacitating and building interventions for municipality, for municipal officials, municipal council, and our traditional leaders. And that is why it is important that we must work together as, as a community and ensure that uh, the ANC becomes victorious in the upcoming elections. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Um, thank you, Honorable Members. The Honorable MEC may now apply, reply, sorry.
Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. We, I forgot to, we therefore support the budget of the Department of Cocta. Thank you. Okay, Honorable Chief, we continue, um, Honorable MEC. Thanks, uh, Honorable Speaker. Honorable H. Smith, just pause, Honorable MEC. Uh, Honourable Speaker, uh, with my budget, I uh, want to apologise. Also, I did not uh, speak out on supporting the, the budget. No, Honourable Smith, that's not how it works. <laughs> Proceed, Honourable MEC. Let me take this opportunity to thank all members and parties in this House for the robust engagement in debating budget vote 8 of the Free State Province, I believe that the main purpose of such robustness is an acknowledgement on the part of the honorable members that whilst we are trying to turn the corner, more still needs to be done. And it is the responsibility of all concerned to work together to ensure that the triple challenges of unemployment, inequality and poverty are defeated. Indeed, honorable members, we agree that the issues you are raising are important and that we are facing many challenges as the department, the government, and the county. These challenges are manifested more in local government, which is led by elected councillors in various uh, municipalities. Let me thank comrades of the ANC and honorable members who acknowledged and supported the budget speech with the replies they gave earlier on. Honorable Speaker, let me reply quickly to the debate of the EFF and accept that the weakness and the shortcoming of the EFF is actually informed by their late coming into politics and the suspicion that the arrival dictates the beginning of the history of politics in the country. It's a short weakness because even their foresight is short, they are unable to identify a futuristic development around Mangawu municipality. The location of the statue of Nelson Mandela at Naval Hill, which is a heritage site. Honorable members, order. Honorable members, order. Honorable Majake. <laughs> Honorable Majake. Honorable Majake. You are leading the country. I'm calling you to order. Otherwise, I'll do something that is. Honorable uh, uh, MEC. Honorable Majake. Thanks, Speaker. Honorable Majake. Thank you. Honorable Development by its nature is futuristic. And that's why the location of the statue in Naval Hill, which is a heritage site. There's also a planetarium in Naval Hill, which is a site, the biggest in the country. Second is the one in Johannesburg. It's a scientist place where they study stars and planets. It's in the It is aimed at building the nation and improving and developing the nation. So you would fail to understand that. There's also a good and huge development around Naval Hill of a cable and a hotel. So your inability to understand the future makes you think that the stage as the first and the second one in terms of development being created there is the only thing. The other weaknesses you are, you are experiencing as the EFF is that you don't want us to refer to the history that we have been through to arrive where we are. And possibly you were not properly 
conscientize on historical materialism. And that's why you ran out of the NC, because you were, you were incapable of comprehending the politics that informs the struggle we engage in then and today. And they inform what we decide today in terms of moving forward as part of the national democratic society we want to establish. Now, in terms of the historical materialism, we understood the history that we went through for us to have the problems of today. And that's why it is difficult for the DA as well to appreciate that in terms of their own history, they come from the South African party and they became the Democratic Party. They are now the, the they became the Democratic Party and they are now Democratic Alliance. And whilst you were a Democratic Party, you participated in the Group Areas Act that created townships and towns. Townships with no development, no infrastructure, no water, no services at all. Belilo Creator, Langwaven Park, which were meant for whites and township for blacks. And you used township as a reserve. And now today we are accusing us. We are addressing your mess. That's why we have a backlog of today wanting to deploy more resources, Kokasi. And that's why you have a problem of us implementing the black economic empowerment, affirmative actions, which are part of a third discrimination because we must level the playing field. You and your fathers and your forefathers and your heroes, Bodhi Tlerke, Libo Hendrik Fervut, you have made sure, you have made sure that you develop wise, you give them business through railway, which is Transnet today, and many others, and created your own economy outside the black people. And that's why we have two economies, a black economy, which is poor, and white economy, which is white, a controlant JSC. Madam Speaker, allow me to update the honorable member of the DA. I thought you were debating budget, Maluti Apofu. Kanti, you were misplaced. You came to a wrong budget. We are debating the budget of the province, Yakokta, vote eight. It deals with the entirety of the province. But your retirement comes from the element that when you were in Malutiapofu, you disrupted councils. You passed an unfunded budget. You experienced interruptions of protest inside as workers and outside. When you were in Malutiapofu, there was collapse of government to an extent that our intervention restored order. And you are wrong. There are no illegal MMs and illegal CFOs appointed there. Where do you get that? Those people are legal and they are appointed by council. I'm not sure who's informing you, they are misleading you. Of course, the council is in a right path um, in terms of Honorable, moving. Honorable MEC, please pause. Uh, Honorable Jungleson. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. I'd just like to inquire whether the MEC will take a question. Honorable MEC, are you prepared to take a question? No, Speaker, I'm not going to take that, that question. He's not prepared. Proceed, MEC. Let me update this House and the, and the, and the Honorable Members. Mangawung is under administration. Of course, it's not our pride. Mangawung has stabilized, as we speak, financially. The primary bank account of Mangawung has now increased with 100 million rands. Mangawung is now able to pay its loan from the GBSA, APSA, and Standard Bank. Mangawung has now been able to pay Bloom Water. They've reduced that account by 180 million. Mangawung has been able to attend to overtime and reduce it by 10 million. However, Mangawung still needs to do their best in terms of cleaning and providing services in terms of wood. My man, the prepaid meters, Adipata Lukibat. We will give you another question. Hon Honorable MEC, address, address, address the speaker. Thank you, speaker. I thought you must see me, this guy. 
the, the, the prepaid meters are paid by government. And people who are indigent still qualified for free water and free electricity, even under that system. It's a best system to be implemented to manage revenue enhancement and also manage properly accounts of various people as they buy. In fact, it has been proven to be the most important and progressive system to address with regards to, to water. It's true, Comrade Maggie, my honorable MEC, we need to attend to social cohesion. We need to attend to land redistribution. The land dispossession, which was under the stewardship of the DP and the National Party, which today they call themselves DA, we need to redo and reverse that process and give land to our people. And we appreciate that we can't waste any time for our people to have sites and a place where they call home, because that is bringing back their dignity. And we are committed as this government to ensure that we are going to roll out a program of giving land to our people, and people must have their dignity. We are going to fast track the program of ensuring that our people receive water, even in areas where it is difficult, even under circumstances where you have floods and drought at the same time through the, 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 the climate change. We are going to make sure that our people, we improve the roads as part of the plan of various budget of municipalities and as part of the plan of the intervention throughout the budget as presented by Comrade Kadisha, our MEC. We will deal with social cohesion. Fortunately, Baruti, we are working with them, traditional leaders, we are working with them, and traditional leaders, healers, including non-governmental organizations. We will keep together this unity with them because we will move together and we will be able to salvage our society. With all this, Madam Speaker, may we all ensure that we build a strong free state. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable um, MEC. Honorable members, the reply by the MEC concludes the debate on vote eight, cooperative governance and traditional affairs. We are now going to take at 10 to 1, a 10 minutes break before we continue with the next motion. We'll be back in the house at 10 past 1.
The Honorable Deputy Speaker, Member Pena. Thank you very much, honorable members. Let us go back to our business. Uh, the secretary shall read the motion. That the second reading debate on appropriation bill 2 2021 be continued with vote 7 social development. Thank you. The vote before the House is vote 7. Social development, the Honorable MEC Kavate, you may address the House. No, thank you very much, uh, Deputy Speaker. Let me um, greet and acknowledge uh, our speaker and yourself, Deputy Speaker, the Premier of the Free State, Mrs. Simtombela, members of the Executive Council, members of the Provincial Legislature, the Deputy Speaker of the National Assembly in, uh, in absentia, he was here earlier. The House of Traditional Leadership, Lemarena, Arona, Kaufela, Adenka, Hare, Honklo, Retotlehi, Lemarena, Aron. The Director General and Heads of Departments and Senior Managers in all spheres of government. The representatives of the NPOs, ECDs, and broader civil society. I'm not sure whether I have acknowledged our executive mayors, our mayors, our speakers, and all the councillors. The business fraternity, our struggle stalwarts, leaders and representatives of Nehau and PSA and other labor partners. Our media houses that are here today, Mewarona, Memas Botelo, comrades, compatriots, esteemed guests, Sichaba, Kakakarezo, Haholoholo, Ba'ahi, Babutshavelo. A good day to all of you, Madume. Pula eana, hamunatika mi dupi, le hodimo le arabes. Honorable Speaker, I rise with humility and honor to present Budget Vote 7 of the Free State Department of Social Development for financial year 2021-2022. In honor, commemoration, and celebration of the 150 years of the life and times 
of our stalwart Mayor Charlotte Mahomu Manyi Matleke, who left an indelible mark in the history of our painful past. We continue to see her as an iconic leader of the oppressed and dispossessed people of South Africa, a woman of great courage, great fortitude, and a true daughter of the soil. Speaker, as we celebrate and commemorate the 150 years of the life and times of the mother of African freedom, who was passionate about social issues and social upliftment of the lives of the people. In her own words, Speaker, she said, social upliftment of African women and children could only lead to the betterment of a society as a whole. That is why, Deputy Speaker, the Department of Social Development joins the world and the country in saluting and remembering our stalwart, a woman of note, a comrade, a selfless leader, a woman of courage, a mother, and a compatriot by naming the newly built Substance Dependency Treatment Center that is here in Botabelo after her. We have a green light from all who needed to be consulted, including the family. In doing so, Speaker, we recommend, we recommit ourselves to continue to tell our children and our grandchildren about their remarkable stories of heroism in order to ignite another generation of gallant leaders to respond to the challenges of this period. Deputy Speaker, Mayor Charlotte Matlake, she must say you appeal nothing in our South Africa. Wow, fuman twa le ngolo le pahaming la Bachelor of Science. Ibile, she must say you appeal. Wow, la ne la horebana, but chehelo ma khota abona adinye weka choko. Me who hero di magistrata sabasadi ma khoteng au adinye we. Deputy Speaker, poverty, joblessness, hunger, and diseases have worsened socioeconomic landscape now more than ever before as a result of COVID-19 pandemic. It means that the need for social welfare services in critical areas such as child protection, violence prevention, substance abuse, trauma counseling, mental health, care of the elderly, gender-based violence that is on the increase. Already, they outstrip the current levels of the provisions of the budget. Delays in placing children in need of foster care in long-term placement could worsen. And therefore, the number of required social service professionals will have to be reviewed due to the enormity of social ills that are prevailing and that the department is dealing with. Speaker, let us thank and appreciate the legislature program on the budget votes that they be taken all over the free state in order to have an interaction with our communities. Today we are here in Bosabel at Lenora Latuto. Bosabel, like any other area, is hit hard by poverty unemployment and inequalities. And COVID-19 has made matters to be worse. In our fight to alleviate 
the social ills and bring hope to the communities of Busabelo. We wish to reflect that our contribution and investment in the area of Busabelo only. Sasa is investing 65.9 million per month on social grants and the Department of Social Development over and above a Sasa investment is investing 4.9 million in the area of Sabelo, uh, giving services to older persons, services to families, to persons with disability, childhood, uh, childhood development, with ECDs, uh, Deputy Speaker, ECDs only, we are investing 39.6 million in Botsabel. With HIV and AIDS, we are investing 1.3 million. The total is, like I said, is 4.9 million. The overall um, investment that we are doing in Botsabelo as a department of social development on, on only, not uh, including others, is 80 million. <laughs> Deputy Speaker, in order to mitigate the impact of COVID-19 through our social security agency, SASA, now uh, focusing on the whole province, And I wish, uh, Deputy Speaker, that um, members of the legislature and those, all those that are holding uh, the speech should remove the R um, in numbers and rent in ways because I am talking about numbers of people here, not the money. By the 28th of February 2021, one million and thirty-three thousand uh, people that are needy were benefiting from social grants in the free state. And this constitutes 37% of the population of the free state premier. The total amount of social grants paid is over eight hundred and 90 million per month, amounting to 10.6 billion per annum. I would not go through the breakdown in terms of um, the grant type, but I will summarize what we are investing in different uh, districts. In Tarip district, there are 51,677 beneficiaries we are leaving 44,545,000 in Tarip. In Mangaung, with 279 beneficiaries, we are leaving 240 million uh, in Mangaung. In Lejolukuso, with 217 beneficiaries, we are investing 187 million in the area. In Tawong with 299, uh, beneficiaries, we are investing 258 million. In Fesile Dabi, with 186,000 beneficiaries, we are investing 166 million in the area. The total is 1.33 million people, uh, and with uh, 890 million per month, 10.6 billion per annum. Sasa also administered and disbursed the special grant of 350 to mitigate the impact of COVID-19 for unemployed person with no income for the period of May to October 2020, and it was later extended to the end of April 2021. As at February 2021, out of a total of 
171 applications were received and out of those uh, applications 319 176,000 were approved for the 350,000. And the greater number of the applicants was males, which made 38%, uh, and the females is, uh, yeah, males are 62%, females are 38%, and people with disabilities are 12%. Let, let me now draw your attention, Deputy Speaker, to our budget programs in order to report how much strides we have made in the past financial year and the undertakings we want to make with our new budget for 2021-2022. We're having five programs. Program one deals with administration. With 293.1 million. Speaker, the increasing pressure on the budget of the department as a result of macroeconomic challenges in our country and the inflationary pressures on social services mean we should be prudent with our financial management. It is for this reason that we are putting efforts to mitigate this strategic risk. During my budget vote of 2020-2021, I committed, Deputy Speaker, the department to conclude appointments of former security learners. And I'm proud to report back that all 35 security officials who were appointed from the Provincial Security Leadership Program are now permanently employed on level three. <laughs> Madam Speaker, the safety and security of our clientele is of utmost importance. In order to meet the increasing demand for security services, we have undertaken an extensive repurposing of the 44 former Masupazila pioneers who have been with the department since 2011 to become CIRA accredited security battalion. During 2021-22, they will be upgraded also from salary level two to salary level three, which means it's a total of 79 security officials who were on salary level two will be on salary level three. We had also committed to enhance the department's capacity through appointment of social work supervisors, social work managers, social work policy developers, social workers, and community development managers. Deputy Speaker, 37 posts in these categories were ad advertised and interviews were concluded. These promotions will be effected in this new financial year and will assist the department to improve its supervision ratio among the social work professionals. So, to Akadi once April, but I will The department has made 16 appointments in managerial and supervisory levels at the newly established Substance Dependency Treatment Center in Busabel. These appointments were made in order to accelerate the utilization of the center. We took an extensive uh, needs analysis process that highlighted the need to bolster capacity at residential care facilities, modus in Bana, Le In the year 2021-2022 financial year, we will appoint additional social workers, professional nurses, and child and youth care workers. 
Deputy Speaker, the Department of Social De Development is determined to create an inclusive workplace. In 2020-2021 financial year, we appointed 74 officials with disabilities. During this coming year, our focus will be on ensuring that we create an enabling environment by, amongst others, providing aids and resources to ensure that they perform optimally. Speaker, during this financial year, department has also bought two vehicles that are compatible to the paraplegic social workers that we are having. These vehicles, Deputy Speaker, are a pilot project which has never ever been done in the country. Meaning the Free State Department of Social Development is the first in the whole country to have such vehicles. The department was no exception speaker to the devastation and pain caused by COVID-19 pandemic. To date, we have recorded 275 officials who contracted the disease. In fact, it's 276 because this morning I got information that uh, one of our own has also contracted uh, the disease today. Five, unfortunately, Deputy Speaker passed on, and 270 recovered. We are happy for that. We continue to provide psychosocial support to the affected individuals and families of uh, the employees of the department. Speaker, the disruptive nature of COVID-19 has necessitated us to enhance our IT efficiencies through the adoption of digital technology roads. We have finalized the process of appointing a suitable partner to assist the department to digitize manual business processes. On infrastructure planning and facilities, which we have placed also uh, under pro program one. For 2021-2022 financial year, the department has set aside an allocation of 8.7 million for maintenance of our government buildings, which could not be done uh, in this current year where we are now due to budget reprioritization to the PPEs. Whilst we note that the budget allocated is very limited, our end goal focus areas remain to improve the registration status of our institutions. These will mainly be on the improvement of their health and safety measures. Program tool, uh, Deputy Speaker, deals with uh, social welfare services. The budget is 245.5 million. And it deals with care services to older people, services to people with disability, um, and under care services to older people. As the custodian of the Older Persons Act 13 of 2006, the Department of Social Development provides community-based care and support services, as well as residential and social work services in partnership with our NGOs. In addition to its mandate to monitor and assess compliance to the norms and standards of the Older Persons uh, Act, the department has included monitoring of compliance to COVID-19 regulations as a means to ensure health and safety to minimize risks amongst the elderly. This was applicable for both, uh, to both government funded and uh, private residential facilities. We thank all the residential care facilities and their management and staff for adhering to the COVID-19 regulations 
to ensure that older persons are protected, we note that the enforcement of compliance was always easy because neither the older persons nor their families uh, did give us a, a problem. They understood when we requested them that the facilities are closed and they are not supposed to visit. Our grat gratitude also goes to the private sector for pledging their support to residential facilities. Speaker Lenane Lamakela Dibaka Sakokomer Samakuk Sesamulao Dia Egeze Ne Kasa Hadasso Hole Redula Rehuele Sarekopa Bato Haba Batli Sise Pilebaisa Makuku Abona di Baking Horena di Register Teka Paha di Register Tek Na Me E for Prahramo Ena Rebellion Shelter Ekaloka fifty five point three Million. Thank you, Your Highness. If you put that at a moment. Um, speaker, after an outcry of limited support to children with autism and children with cerebral palsy, the department is continuing to provide support and funding to Nazarene Center for Children with Autism and Pilang Center for Children with uh, Cerebral Palsy, which are in Bloemfontein. <laughs> the good news, speak, Deputy Speaker, is that we are going to increase the stipends for the caregivers in the daycare centers where people with disabilities are placed. Experience on COVID-19 has highlighted a need for providing training to the family members who are caregivers to people with disabilities. And we are starting with such a program in the new year. On the protective workshops, which are care facilities for people with disabilities who are elder people. The department will continue to fund the 24 protective workshops with an allocated budget of 3.1 million. These protective workshops are meant to equip persons with disabilities with skills to become economically active and provide them with social services. On disability cooperatives, the department assisted Kamahano Protective Workshop that is in Henneman to register as a co-op and they are producing hands-free stand sanitizers. The stands had to be taken through the quality assurance process with the assistance of a, an NPO called Meals on Wheels. The department will be sourcing the hands-free uh, sanitizer stands for our ECDs uh, also from this co-op and they are outside uh, deputy speaker showing the work that they are doing as a disability group. The department is also in partnership with a, a private partner, uh, King's Comfort, that has allocated an up operating site, machinery, and raw material to a cooperative of young people with disabilities who will be manufacturing wheelchair support cushions, pillows, and coffee tables from recycled material. On social relief of distress, um, the department, uh, Deputy Speaker, derives its mandate from the Social Assistance Act of 2004 and Disaster Management Act of 2002. 
to implement the social relief of distress. The social relief of distress program provides temporary and immediate assistance to identified needs uh, in communities affected by incidences that are not declared as disasters and or any other social condition resulting in undue hardships. This came as an unfunded mandate to the department to mitigate against this figure uh, and responding adequately to the needs of the affected communities. The department is establishing a departmental rapid response relief center, which will be functional in the first quarter of 2021-2022. Its sole purpose will be to provide material assistance in the form of blankets, mattresses, clothing, dignity packs, and food parcels to the affected, impoverished households and communities in various districts of the province. 700,000 has been allocated for this program. We are on program three, uh, Deputy Speaker, Children and Families. The budget is 558.8 million. On early childhood development, which is critical to ensure better performance in formal schooling, which could later result in improved levels of employment, hence the first thousand days of a child are critical for development and nurturing. Mampuri uh, Hayoka Jenu, Hansa Swara number one, Kitike Foundation is one who is CD. The equitable share budget allocation, Deputy Speaker, for ECDs in 2021-2022 financial year is 240.2 million, which is 17.7% of the total budget of the department. And this covers 48 uh, and 650,000 children. In addition, an allocation of 50.9 million from conditional grant will benefit 9,389 children. This will be an increase of 3,821 of children who benefited uh, from uh, the current year into the new year. The subsidy will remain at 17 rand per child for 264 days, and the stipend will remain 1,151 for the matrons and the practitioners. In 2021, in 2020, 2021 financial year, the department committed to construct two ECD uh, structures uh, with the conditional grant allocation. But unfortunately, Deputy Speaker, this could not, not happen because subsequently the funds were repurposed for PPEs and related COVID-19 mitigation measures to prepare for the readiness to open the ECDs. So for 2021-2022, 12.5 million is earmarked for the construction of just one ECD instead of two that was committed in the uh, year that is ending. And also for improving 61 conditionally registered facilities to meet the basic uh, needs of the of full registration of the ECDs. So Premier Retla maintainer says 61 or detole uh, full registration the ECD. As a result of the initiative, the department has been able to conduct, um, to document, not to conduct, to document 300 unregistered ECDs and the process is, in, is continuing, including targeting ECDs in the farming communities. The number may therefore be more than uh, the 300 of unregistered ECDs. In fostering social cohesion with our stakeholders, we have established an advisory committee made up of representatives of ECD formations, Supiosa Komitiena, Kibu Elezi,
Uh, Deputy Speaker, Program 4, Victim Empowerment uh, Program. I am proud to announce that renovations of two secure care centers for children in conflict with the law, Matiti Mechis and Winti Direko, are completed and are operational. I had previously reported in the 2020-2021 financial year that 16 social work graduates would be appointed to work in areas with high prevalence of gender-based uh, violence, substance abuse, and issues affecting children uh, throughout the province. We are happy to announce that those 16 social workers are now permanently employed and that there is an additional seven new social workers who are still on contract and all are appointed and assigned to Tutuzela daycare centers, to the Botsabelo Magistrate Court, and to Elizabeth Ross Hospital in Kwakwa. <clears throat> On shelters uh, for victims of gender-based violence, Madam Deputy Speaker, shelters of victims of gender-based violence, who are mainly women, remain a critical shortage in our communities. In 2020-2021 budget vote, we reported having one safety house and six shelters uh, in this financial year. An allocation is set aside for opening another shelter in Karib. But, Speaker, we need to recently report that as we are setting up others, one shelter closed down in Paris and setting us back. During 2021 financial year, we allocated 500,000 for the completion of a new building for Tusana Advice Center in Kwaku. This organization has been operating from a shelter from a small refurbished container at Makwani Youth Center. We, all, we are also pleased to announce that we are in talks with Sparta uh, for an establishment of a multi-purpose center in Makwat which will consist of a skills development unit. The center will offer life skills, IT training, business management, and skills to youth and women, particularly those who have been victims of gender-based violence and the members of the LGBTQI community. The department has also registered that legal puzwa as deserving greater attention in responding to the increase in gender-based violence cases, we have started engaging the Tabong police station to ensure integrated and rapid response to issues of gender-based violence and social crime. Speaker, on HIV and AIDS, we will continue finding the NPOs that are dealing with HIV and AIDS uh, matters. They are 117 in number, and the budget for that is 18.1 million. A budget of 5.3 million is available for 2021-2022. Honorable MEC, Congrats, you are left with three minutes. Yep, Speaker, uh, Deputy Speaker, thank you very much. Um, on substance abuse, um, Speaker, there are 43 NPOs that we have been funding in the year 2020-2021 to the value of 8.1 million. In the new financial year, we have been allocated 8.4 million for transfer payments to these uh, NPOs. 
on drug and alcohol dependency treatment center in Busabelo. Speaker, Deputy Speaker, I would like to announce the completion of the center in Busabelo, a total amount of 73.7%, 73.7% seven million was spent on the project over the years. The center has a capacity for 40 beds and the center will create 100 jobs in total. And Bersabelo will also be benefiting from uh, this post. The Charlotte Matlake Substance uh, Dependency Treatment Center is now operational. Later in the year, we will officially launch uh, the name uh, Deputy Speaker. Uh, Deputy Speaker, Tabaza uh, Social Development Aiding Act. Mare Eric and Kemun Yetaona Hosalo Sahore on women development. When I lead five co ops, so already established saying a Hutusa Basaji, me Basabarek Sumichini, the socialists of us on Langu de Sevedis. When I lead other co ops, so already established saying. Intabanchu, Sabacha, Hore, Bahone, Hore, Babeli, Dispaza shops, Zeta Limpu, Alessasa, Hore, Batuarna Bahole, Haufiniana, a deputy speaker. A key present a who Nkuena, a speaker, Paja Ete, Jolekaha Ibewe, in page twenty two, a program one, two hundred and ninety three point one million, program two. 245.5 million, program three, 558 million, uh, program four, 188.3 million, program five, 156.5 million. Kilebo Habo, the speaker, Kilebo Habrimi, our executive, a Katsevedisan of Moho, Kilebo Ha legislature, Kilebo Ha chairperson, Warona, Tateta Womego. Le collective as a sang Leona, Kileboa, honorable member Chavalala, Propec, Le collective as a sang Huyona, Kanako Sotle Harasla Hamo, a Ray Tuta, Kileboa collective as social development, Edulang, Esabesaka Tata Sabueta Pirevan, advocate, Parso, Habaro Bala Limobani speaker, Kileboa family, Leba Hotsibaka, Badulam Bansi, Kanako Sotle Kalibo. Thank you very much, Honorable MEC. Let me take this opportunity and give the chairperson of the committee, Honorable Tabomeku, to address the House. <laughs> Deputy Speaker, thank you very much. On behalf of the ANC and the Portfolio Committee, really well, welcome this speech, well articulated, reflecting a department that is at the center of our efforts to fight a devil called poverty. Honorable Premier, uh, members of Parliament, and Chavasa is sitting, getting our own vacation. Deputy the Speaker, the ANC wishes to indicate that we have made a remarkable progress in the transition from apartheid to democracy. And this transition has been peaceful despite the country's history of a violent conflict and dispossession, because that in itself will polarize a human relations in between those who are oppressed and those who are oppressed. But despite that, this transition was managed politically so that it becomes the basis to take our country where we want to take it. We welcome the reality that in nearly every facet of the life of our country, advances have been made in building an inclusive society rolling back the shadow of history and broadening opportunities for all. The situation which was not under apartheid, 
South Africa has been able to build the institutions necessary for a democratic and transformative state. We made a point at some point that the Constitution enshrines a right-based approach and envisions a prosperous and racial and sexist democracy that belongs to all of its people. The reason why we started the revolution, the reason why we will exist up until we achieve the strategic objective of why we want to change South Africa as a country. We are proceeding to indicate that healing the wounds of the past and redressing the inequalities called, caused by the centuries of racial exclusion are constitutional imperative. And that's why yesterday we were saying it's an internationally acclaimed constitution, because it contains all of these things that uh, we want to achieve and how we want to achieve it. In fact, it's ingrained in the Freedom Charter itself through various clauses uh, of our constitution. We're making a point that access to services has been broadened. In fact, we were on the right track to stabilize the economy if it was not because of the 2008 financial meltdown and now of late the pandemic, which have got a huge bearing also on our ability to build the economy moving forward. But we are confident that uh, this society that we are seeking to build is beginning to emerge out of the womb and the history of uh, apartheid uh, uh, state. We're indicating that the effects of financial meltdown and COVID-19 devastating repercussions have got potential to undermine our victories and progress as we march forward towards the national democratic society. Millions who were previously excluded have got access to education today as we speak. Uh, MEC Mamiki has alluded to many of these achievements. Water and electricity, healthcare, housing, and social security. About more people are working today than in 1994. And the po poverty rate has declined and an average income has grown steadily in real times, in real terms. In other words, we are not making a claim, but we are talking about what we are able to see, the lives of our people improving in terms of quality every day. Deputy Speaker, 1994 till to date, this reality is seen through the lives of South Africans. And we think that it is a strong scientific basis. Researches have been made, desktop, others are doing sample. We are talking about what we see every day as we go on the ground and talk to our people. And that's why our conclusion is as the most reliable scientific basis, because we can see it with our naked eyes, that indeed their lives are improving uh, every day. And that's why we want to conclude that the ANC is moving closer to achieving a better life for all South Africans, what we have promised our people in 1994, especially the Africans and Blacks who were dispossessed. A greater number of our people have, have got access to basic infrastructure and services. Spoke about clean water, sanitation, electricity, and all of these things are very key in improving and bringing about the dignity of human beings. And it is because of this progress and the commitment which has been expressed through this uh, budget vote and many that will be presented in front of you, that we welcome the budget vote as pro poor and pragmatic to concretize the ANC vision of confronting and defeating and with time eradicating poverty. And that's why our understanding is that a speech is a solid plan which continues the struggles of our people to liberate themselves from poverty and starvation. We knew then and now that poverty elevation and stronger economy are deeply interrelated as well mutually supporting objectives. And that's why in summer we are saying redistribution without growth is financially unsustainable. Wild growth without redistribution will fail, will fail structural transformation of the economy and all of it. And that's why, as the ANC was saying, our policy on social welfare and social security net guided our action and program to achieve this progress. 
Our policy is derived from the system which we are borrowing, by the way, from Europe immediately after the Second World War and the First World War. And we're localizing that practically through our document that called the RDP, Reconstruction and Development Program, which defines our priorities. That whilst it is important to maintain the economy, but when our people are hungry, we can't speak English and say, but you must have hope because the economic fundamentals are at play. Our people were made hungry by apartheid a day after 1994, when we took over, our people were ravaged by poverty and where to respond. All these strategic and good programs that MEC Mamik is speaking about are intended directly to attack and confront poverty challenges. Hence, our social security net. Now, because of that, we are being accused of, hey, these ones are creating a welfare state. No. Our people are hungry. And they're not hungry because they're stupid. Not because they can't think. It's a systematic program. They've been made to be poor. Excluded from their own land and from their own economy to be able to participate and of course derive the things that uh, are sustaining life. We're making a point that uh, the voices of the opposition accusing us of creating what they call unsustainable welfare state, seeking to corner the liberation movement to elevate growth, in other words, profit, without social content over the social welfare of the oppressed. The ANC refused to succumb and implemented the Reconstruction and Development Program. All of them combined the opposition, continues to oppose this policy, and yet at the same time claim to be the representative of the people. There's just no way that will elevate the defense of capital interest of profit maximization at the expense of our people's misery. Devastating poverty was experienced the day after the first democratic elections as we were making that point. And we were further indicating that it was not an accident of history, but a product of an ideological disposition of those who were in charge of our country. Honorable Tembeni is able to trace the evolution of this opposition from national party to somewhere and today uh, they are now at uh, my left hand side wearing blue t shirt. And I think it's a proper and correct characterization so that our people must understand what is it that we're talking about. And I wish Honorable Kakao was around because I was going to tell her that you are being created as a, as, a, as a child soldier to attack even progress that is intended for your own people. But the fact that you do not know is not your fault, it's our fault because we must conscientize you politically. But they are doing it deliberately that her thinking is dislocated from history. She must believe that life began and it started when she became a member of parliament. The history of this country has got, there's no relationship between that history and what is happening in our country today. And the point we're making is that you can't resolve the problems of this country if you do not understand their root cause. You've got to appreciate who created them and why, and how were they created, so that your policy posture must then talk to the root cause. What we term in economic terms, the structural basis of our problems. And honorable members who came here before me spoke about it. The root cause is the fact that uh, people were oppressed deliberately to dehumanize them so that their role in the economy is to provide labor and nothing else. They can't own the means of, uh, uh, of production. They can't even have access to the means of survival. So even the recent statistics of Africa released figures indicating that the large number of our population is still in clashes of poverty and that the real victims are vulnerable groups, women, youth, and the elders. Women are still stuck at the bottom of the hierarchy in the socioeconomic scales. Welcome the intensification of efforts of linking grant beneficiaries and caregivers to economic opportunities. And thank you very much, Honorable Mamiki, with such a strategic uh, And We want to make a point further that despite this history, despite this reality today, but we've noted women empowerment as one of the fundamental area in the transformation of our society. We have since 1994 witnessed the increase in proportion of women in leadership positions. Today we have confidence and capacity 
to the extent that they are even taking us forward, heading such a difficult department of social development. There's no such thing as difficult as having to confront the economy and having to manage, I mean, poverty and having to manage the economy, and we're proud. And this was largely because of the leadership that the ANC has provided and fought through the throat of society of South Africa that let's adopt the policy of 50-50. We're not adopting it because our women were not capable and sons of Azam were no. We said this society is still patriarchal. And patriarchy is a twin brother, by the way, to capitalist exploitation. It didn't come only because people were confident. No, the system desired it so that uh, you succeed to even oppress those society holds dear, our mothers. Because I'm sure any other social group appreciate the role of women. And in our characterizations and programs, we talk about triple oppression of women, precisely to ally to society that we're dealing with this particular monster and our approach has got to be different. Yes, all of us were oppressed as a social groups, as Africans and blacks, but this one, with patriarch and everything else, they were oppressed uh, as a people and uh, as, uh, as, as, as women. Speaker, just to organize myself. Uh, you know, as people speak here, you, you write many notes so that you respond to very important uh, question. We're, we're proceeding that uh, uh, after the ANC has introduced the 50-50 women leadership in internal structures and its deployment in government, and further made a clarion call that it must fry an expression throughout society. It's not only the issue of the ANC, but it's about ensuring that uh, we build our society through our image in terms of these resolutions that we think uh, have got to be cutting across all the levers of society. It continues, that particular program continues as a political program till we win the entirety of society over. Inspired by a scientific analysis of the denigrating impact of apartheid on our women, I did speak about uh, the issue of the uh, triple oppression. The ANC greatly appreciates and believes that the budget allocations to empower women equally in areas of politics, the economy, agriculture, including the land, forces ahead the gender struggles against patriarchy and the continuation of economic exploitation through a new system called neoliberalism. So we are inspired by an agenda to build yet another Charlotte McCleck, Honorable MEC uh, covered during our time. And when we succeed to do that in our own belief, it will be a current door that would have arrived at our testing. So we've been provided with hope that when we achieve these short-term milestones, we're heading to where we want to go. Speaker, we welcome increased allocation and focus against gender-based violence. It is our belief that incidences of abuse suffered by women and children reflects that we are a barbaric society incapable to protect the most vulnerable. In the words of one of the famous philosophers, Edmund Buke, Thank I quote, you very much, the only thing necessary Brian. for the triumph of evil is for the good men not to do anything. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Let me give over to Honorable Deva Smith. You may address the House, Honorable Smith, in three minutes. Thank you, Honorable Deputy Speaker. Deputy Speaker, the strategic focus of the Department of Social Development is to deliver an integrated developmental welfare service to the vulnerable, provide sustainable development programs that facilitate the empowerment of communities, and render residential care and integrated developmental services to children in need of care and older and frail persons. This is in partnership with the non-government, community-based and faith-based organizations to which the department awards financial assistance. It is also necessary that good governance through sound business management practices be instilled. Achtbare adjunct speaker, hierdie departement is echter in een elendige toestand en val diegene wat afhankelijk van hom is. Early childhood development is essential to improve education and especially decrease the dropout rate in secondary education. Zero to four 
are the most crucial years for a child's brain development, and even more so if the child is vulnerable and exposed to poverty and thus malnutrition and other forms of toxic stress. Children who lack fundamentals in these crucial early years are put at a permanent disadvantage in life. Research has shown that a child's brain experiences its most dynamic and rapid period of development during these early years and needs a stable and supportive environment in which to flourish. Speaker, the MEC of Education and his department can do everything to improve education, but if our ECD projects are, are inefficient and fails, it will be in vain. Aagbare adjunct speaker, dit is een absolute skande dat die departement van maatschappelijke ontwikkeling slechts 17 rand per kind per dag begroot as financiële steen onder vroege kinderontwikkeling. Speaker, with 17 rand, one can barely buy a single loaf of bread these days. Hierdie departement het een verplichting om ontwikkeling en opheffingswerk te doen. Die vrije stad kan nie bekostig om in een welzijnstaat te verander en miljarde rande aan welzijnstoelare te spandeer sonder om werkloses en armes op te hef dier projekte wat onderwijs en werkschepping bevorder nie. Honorable Deputy Speaker, violence against women and children is also a great cause for concern. Having only one safety house and five shelters in the entire free state for this purpose is totally unacceptable. This war against gender-based violence cannot be won while the ANC government regards this as acceptable. An important department such as this one that has an inadequate, inadequate budget should focus on applying good financial management and cost savings. The Honorable MEC will have to investigate this and every rand and cent will have to be turned around twice in the coming financial year. I uh, thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable Smith. Let me then give over to Honorable William Bulu and to address the House in 10 minutes. Honorable Deputy Speaker, Premier of the Free State, members of the Executive Council, members of the legislature, all protocol observed, guest ladies and gentlemen. Honorable Deputy Speaker, it is in 1928 where the packed government representing white workers and Africaners nationalists passed an old age pensions an explicit racially motivated initiative to an anxieties about the white poverty. Two things stand out. Firstly, the pensions were non-contributory and entirely funded by the state. And secondly, the act made pensions available to white, colored men and women. The ANC government in its first democratic term established a single department with a coherent system and measuring the 14 different welfare departments that were riddled with corruption, fraud, and efficiencies. I want to repeat that one. The ANC government in its first democratic term established a single department with a coherent system imagined the 14 de different welfare department that were riddled with corruption, fraud, and efficiency. corruption <laughs> Today, national income tax contributes to social security, and it covers all pensioners, war veterans, pension, disability, child support, care dependency, foster child, social relief. We must emphasize that this happens despite citizens' color and race. This is what we call a better life for all. The transformation of the social welfare policy by the ANC government is remarkable, and its drastic achievements are traceable since the first democratic election. This reaffirms that the ANC is the leader of government and consists and committed in building 
a non-racial, non-sexist, united, and prosperous South Africa. Black women in this country during the apartheid were faced with race, gender, class, oppression, and discrimination at work. This anti pass in 19, 9th August 1958 shaped the struggle in the country. However, today we are still see patriarchal tendencies and gender-based role in the society. We commend MEC Kabate to support the Itiken Sewing Project in Setajaneng Village, an organization that sues uniform for the primary school to procure industrial machinery, essential and the establishment of two spaza shops in Tabanchu area. That will be linked to Sasa Pay Point. The, the initiative to get women into the township economy and providing access to the elderly and the disability around the area. Honorable Deputy Speaker, we supported the social grant increase as effective from the 1st of April 2021. Notably, the grant and the pensions have immensely contributed to the livelihood of our people. Furthermore, these grant pensions are reduced, extreme, are reduced extremely poverty, stabilized and sustained household. We should, not, we should note that after salary, grant are the second source of income to household and for the poorest in the main. Deputy Speaker, as part of the ANC skills revolution, in our election manifesto, we spoke on a system transfer of responsibility of ECDs from Department of Social Development to the Department of Education. Today in this budget vote, that we are glad that the process had been initiated in the Department of Social Development, Department of Education, and the Department of Health are busy with the coordination. The systematic transfer of responsibilities of EDC to align the education sector, develop a curriculum of ECD, ECDs, and train ECDs practitioners. This will improve the children's reading, writing, accounting ability towards formal schooling and increase the country's literacy because the curriculum will be centered on the cognitive development of a child. Therefore, we support the budget committed on the ECD centers. Honorable Deputy Speaker, it is exactly a year and a day since the first national lockdown announcement that was made on the 23rd, March 2020, by the President of the Republic, Ntateseral Ramaphosa. This was to keep the spread of coronavirus in the country. Lockdown regulation were put in place, which also had serious psychological and social disruptive consequences known as quarantine paradox. The rise of gender-based violence, particularly during the lockdown, associated with the negative consequences such as the risk of losing a job, economic vulnerabilities, psychological health. These are the issues emanating from the loneliness, isolation, and uncertainty. Therefore, we commend the department for appointing 15 additional social workers graduated that will work at a high prevalence of gender-based violence subsistence abuse issues affecting children. We are embarking on a transformation of the society and prioritizing the right of women, children, people with disability, and the LGBTQIA+. We will continue to work tirelessly to reduce ultimately end violence against women, children, discrimination against people with disability, and the LGBTQIA+. Part of our solution towards solving the gender-based violence is resolving our social and economic inequalities that are related to social ills. This global evidence indicates that society that are in equal society economically are more prone to have more who engage in the harmful use of alcohol, drugs, to have high level of violence and high level of gender-based violence. Gangsterism, drugs and alcohol abuse are part of the problem that our society is faced with. People who are participating in this gangsterism, substance abuse, are young boys, of course, influenced by different material conditions. We welcome the department initiative that will take place individually of men and boys championing program that 
aimed at reducing gangsterism and social problems. The initiative to transform dumping sites to safety parks is welcome beyond, because beyond saving as a recreational space and a point of success to information, this initiative also has a dimension of an environmental clean and reducing illegal dumping sites in a society, and this will directly also lead to the re reduction of health illness that are caused by illegal dumping. Honorable Deputy Speaker, the budget vote of the Department of Social Development, as presented by the MEC Kabate, falls squarely in what the ANC aim to achieve in this country. And it is in this context that we support <laughs> this budget vote as tabled. I thank you. Thank you, Honorable MEC. Honorable Nanyane, you may address the House. Speaker, Premier, leaders of the government in waiting EFF, and distinguished guests, Kiali Dumedisa. Madam Speaker, the EFF has taken note of 240. 2 million allocation over the MTEF periods, which fund will be mainly for early childhood development ECD for 2020 and 2021 financial year. In making sure that we address the social economic challenges in our, in our province, we need to first be firm and be serious about fighting corruption as a going concern and hindrance to our seriousness and endeavors of making sure that the social ill, the so social ill and the, depart the depart apartheid frontiers are being pushed and be eliminated for good. Speaker, Substance abuse is now a new norm amongst our society and our teenagers in the province. There is this developing trends of mushrooming drug hub in our community. The law enforcement agents know them and our community members know them, which begs the question as to what is the free state government doing about this ill fate that has turned our children into zombies? The allocation that is aimed to nurture this kid from the ECD up will be short-lived if these drug nests are not being eliminated and the self-proclaimed drug slots are being brought to book. By building this facility, we are saying, in a way of invitation, take an abuse drug, and the free state government will accommodate you into this facility. And in that way, we are not addressing the substance abuse. Speaker, the main point is that it doesn't matter how many cadres of 130 three permanent staff you put as a managers, social workers, and care workers at Sherlock Magrike Substance Abuse Treatment Dependency Center here in Butsabelo. Honorable members, the formula is not right because here, Madam MEC, the focus point should be the early childhood development. Kimani more ring tupa ikojwa isalimiz. Speaker, the point we are making is that yes, the allocation is properly being placed, and today we are underlining the echoing of the words that allocate the revised from the 240.2 million will be mainly for the early childhood development, and there you could be nabbed the drug monster 
in the bud. You, you, want, you, want my you have a darling of a household in a form of States SA, and that simply demands of you to get your social workers hitting the ground in consultation with ward councillors in the pursuit of harvesting information from struggling households where these tendencies of substance abuse manifest. It is within the context EFF strongly believed that you could have addressed the substance abuse working alongside with law enforcement agencies and the Charlotte Madeke Substance Abuse Treatment Dependency Center. Budget could have been used to address the poverty that is ransacking our, our communities and the, pro, the poorest of our masses. Speaker, that does not need one to master rocket science in order to address this issue because they happen from amongst our people every single day. We see our lives going waste as a result of substance abuse and yet we are having a government that portrays itself as a caring government. Yours is a government that undermines social cohesiveness in all its multifaceted components. And your infighting and self-interest egos are nauseating. Because we live in a world that is constantly developing and does lifestyle changes, hence we need a social development department that keeps up with times by spending more on development and research. Your mission, vision, and value statement confess that yours is to ensure on your primary core functions with regard to management and oversight over social security in passing social assistance and social ins insurance policies, which aim to prevent and alleviate poverty in the event of life cycle risk, such as loss of income due to unemployment, disability, old age, or death. Speaker, the substance abuse is ravaging our youth and focus should be aimed at our youth development as COVID-19 has also impacted on them negatively. More should also be invested in the so social relief funds as a cost of living has drastically taken a hike due to the pandemic. Madam Speaker, the Social Development Department needs to have an active public participation unit that is easily accessible by the less fortunate who lives in the rural area and in our township. The child-headed households are not given the necessity attention and the budget does not adequately accommodate them. More money and time should be invested in that regard. In essence, as is evidence that the gender-based violence and femicide is troubling us, the budget should also seek to put the microscope on men and young boys. We need to invest on them so as to ensure that they get to be workshopped and be developed. The EFF is of the desire of ensuring that the social cohesion, cohesion common ground is upheld because that is the only glue that bonds society together. Essential for achieving peace, democracy and development, and to prove that we are serious about the project social cohesion.
The EFF established the gender-based violence desk from its headquarters to provinces and from provinces to regions. Enough is enough. And we are steadfast in making sure that social relationship, connectedness, orientation towards the common and good and quality gets to be realized in our lifetime. The EFF will continue protecting the marginalized and oppressed even if it's our enemies. But we will not forgive the trader even if they are our brothers and sisters. Mekabati, EFF ke mkhatlo o khathalang sechaba le bana ba dipolo. Re eme ka mauto ho phutla tshotleho ya ngwana mo Afrika ka ho tsamaisa dipetsi dipolong ka ho fapana ka tsona mona free starter beke engwe le engwe jwale ka ge le mogatlo wa EFF o khathalang sechaba. Madam Speaker, into Melan Kikin Kemunia, on a Kisoko Medisa, Honorable Makima Hassa, Puenya Bulletin, Hore, ANC, Ita Busa, who Fisella Jesso Afisa, Mema Hassa, Ereko Soko Medise, Jesso Uemimunyako, Umu Hubedu Utesi Madi as a Fabano, Jole Gasa Parosena Sekisa Peri. O emetse ho kena a tlontsha ma Afrika bo khobeng bona ba muso wa ha Lastly put that budget to good use because we will be watching you as hawks thank you Thank you honorable eh nanyane honorable Muleleki. Amen. When I eat her, I'm going to Honorable Speaker. Uh, Aye, I, Honorable Nanya, it's as well. Honorable Deputy Speaker, Honorable Premier of the Free State, uh, Honorable Tenudi, Lichisa Busiumba Hontate, Lanude, Honorable Members of the Free State Provincial Legislature, Honorable Members of the Free State Council, Marena Aruna, Aululu Marena Mahulu. Morena Hulu Mopedi, Morena Montredi Mota, Limarena Osa Tinquan, Executive Mayors, Speakers, Councillors, Mema Sibotello, Baai Bosheba, Free Stata, Liba Iba Tinquan. Standing on a balcony of the of Cape Town City Hall waiting to address the people who came uh, to support him, the late President uh, Tata Mandela said, our march to freedom is irreversible. We must not allow fear to stand in our way. Uh, before I go further, Honorable Speaker, as the ANC, we support the budget vote of the Department of Social Development. The high level of gender-based violence and femicide in South Africa are a bad dent on our nation. This is a badge, badge uh, we are wearing, which is not supposed to be worn with pride. Uh, women have fought very hard not to expose to this abusive behavior. South Africa remains one of the culprits of human intimidation and intimidate, intimate partner violence. Rape and sexual violence have 
become extremely endemic and more dangerous. It is affected, it, it, it affects everyone, young and old, black and white or white, rich and poor, rural or urban. Uh, the violence, uh, the violation of human knows no status, no class. We are heard that our children are continuously assaulted and murdered in our province in the hands of men. LGBTQ1 plus community remains vulnerable section of our society with corrective rape and lack of tolerance. The hatred towards members of the LGBTQ1A plus has led to hate crime such as homophobic rape and killings of LGBTQ1A plus persons became because of their sexual orientation. The lack of accountability and responsibility for addressing gender-based violence remains a challenge to be addressed by both administrative and political leadership. We continue to have law spending on the plight faced by women as it related relates to gender-based violence. The department is continuing to open shelters for victims of crime and violence in our society. We need to create a conductive environment for victims of crime and violence. Honorable Mamiki Kabate, the department continues to be in the forefront of the war against human abuse. We have seen the department in action in taking forward the challenge women are facing and this budget vote is a step to ensure that there is an implementation of these ideals the department stand for. That's why, uh, uh, honorable speaker, uh, the ANC support this budget vote. Honorable speaker, the department continues to raise awareness on disability and the capabilities of persons with disabilities. The people with disabilities continue to be disadvantaged. The society has to be active uh, participants in protecting the rights of this section of our society. We cannot continue to marginalize them. They should be at the center of uh, our program uh, and in this state of the nation uh, address, the president was telling that equally we need to, I quote, to equally we need to give attention to issues affecting children, including improving school readiness. ECDs planning and funding protection against preventable diseases, policy reform around ch uh, child welfare and reducing violence against children. In the year ahead, we are also going to forge ahead with efforts to provide greater opportunities for the persons with disability to participate in the economy and in this society in general. The department must continue to assist early childhood development centers with a adherence uh, to occupational health and society and safety standards so that we cannot expose our people to occupational hazards. Our people in old age homes need to be afforded more dignity and caring. The older persons are more vulnerable than many of, of us. With the challenges of COVID-19, we need to be more sensitive to their plight. We are happy that the department will ensure that social workers in the employ of government will be became adoption specialists. 
uh, after the Children's Act was amended to include government social workers and adoption specialists. We welcome the work the department is doing in this uh, regard. This policy will go a long way in helping us as a nation to continue to protect our children. We are still faced with substance abuse that leads to disrupt of social orders and peace in our communities. We should also thank the department for providing necessary facilities for treatment and rehabilitation. Our department is active activist uh, in nature and for that we are appreciated. The department continues to make allocation for payment, payment of stipends to child and youth care workers in order to strengthen our approach to challenges faced by uh, the children. The Department of Social Development has done a good work in facilitating crime prevention and providing uh, probation services to children in conflict with the law. The youth remain usually affected by unemployment rates and the department must also continue to assist in trying to facilitate work opportunities for the youth as COVID-19 pandemic has exacerbated the problem for youth unemployment. The conclusion, honorable speaker, in conclusion, honorable speaker, the ANC as a caring organization remain committed to change the lives of the people, uh, and I quote, while there were significant job losses, the impact on the poor was mitigated through the implementation of solidarity-based social policies before the onset of the crisis. This includes the provision of cash transfers to the most marginalized and vulnerable South Africans, the provision of basic services uh, and adequate and quality housing to the poor and section of the working classes, free health care to children under the age of six and indigent policies that sought to ensure that marginalized South Africans have access to basic services such as water and electricity. These social protection policies and programs have reduced poverty and vulnerability by uh, diminishing the poor exposure to risk and enhancing uh, their capacity to manage economy and social risk, such as unemployment, exclusion, sickness, disability, and old age. I thank you, Honorable Speaker. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, Honorable Lituka. You may address the house. Uh, what if we saw no? I went on to Mel. Madam Speaker, thank you very much for the opportunity to address this important gathering. The Department of Social Development is mandated to meet the human and social needs 
of the poor and vulnerable communities of the free state through an intersectoral and integrated developmental social service. It is tasked with the protection and development of some of the most vulnerable individuals in our society. And these are children, the youth, and the young job seekers, adults struggling to make ends meet, the elderly, people with disabilities, and the institutions in our communities who are the foot soldiers at the battle against poverty. It is supposed to work closely with community-based non-governmental organizations in order to secure social services for those who cannot provide for themselves. And if effectively managed, such programs should improve the lives of the most vulnerable in our society. But the arrogance of the governing party continues to entrench the suffering of free state residents. Experience has taught me that most people don't want handouts. Most want dignity that comes with having employment and being able to provide for their families. The most unfortunate reality, though, is that the province is slipping further away from providing this each day, and more people are becoming dependent on social grants. We chompo basi chaba guanyamela, ahuluakaka anga haraba cha, baati zinga ramizi aruna. Fortunately, the Free State province is filled with people who are eager to assist in the areas where sometimes government does not have the capacity to reach. But in many cases, their efforts are futile, especially when this department continues to turn a blind eye on the harsh realities of the ground experience by our people. But I thought I would start by looking at the department's performances for the programs implemented in 2019-2020. Under the program for children and families, the department has an achievement rate of an eye-watering 38% only. Madam Speaker, in university terms, this represents a fail. This is simply not good enough. But the story gets better. The department also failed to achieve its target in the number of departmental performance reviews concerned and also failed to achieve its target regarding risk management committee meetings convened. The department also failed regarding the number of disciplinary cases finalized within the prescribed time frame, and also failed regarding the number of district uh, quarterly performance review sessions held. Madam Speaker, may I remind you that these are not targets set by the opposition parties. This is the department's own targets, which they still cannot achieve. Just when you think the ANC cannot lower their already low bar, they seem to surprise you time and time again. Only now, this is no longer a surprise. It is what has become expected under the ANC. It is a cause of concern that the Department of Social Development continue to use food parcels as part of the ANC election campaigns. 
what the undermining of the minds of the electorate. We have seen informed, we have been informed that in copies, the department is traveling to various farms, handing out food parcels alongside ANC councillors. This would not be a problem if the ANC councillors were not in attendance, and if this is not only restricted to election years. Food parcels can never be a once-off election campaign event that is cruel to people who require food every day. The ANC have never cared about people's long-term needs, but rather their own short-term political needs. Government departments are, through the cater deployment strategy, mere extensions of the ANC, and government funds are part of the ANC's election campaign budget. We also saw during the first lockdown how food parcels and other COVID-19 support was channeled through ANC public representatives and other structures for political purposes. The crony network swoops in like vultures every time the government embarks on some social initiative, each fighting for a piece of the pie. It was therefore not strange to see truckloads of food parcels being offloaded at some very, very high officials' residences, mostly at night and not during the day. Honest people work during the day, while those with dubious motives sneak about at night. This department has also underachieved in its own target of reuniting families. The department has also underachieved in its own target of children accessing registered ECD programs that the MEC spoke about. The department has also underachieved in its own target of subsidizing ECDs through the conditional grants. The department has also underachieved in providing care and protection to the children in child and youth care centers. It is clear this department is a total failure. Mekabate, you should really hang your head in shame. These are just some examples of how a great initiative with funding already secured and which has the potential to improve the lives of people in communities falls flat on the face of the ANC government. Madam Speaker, the Free State is a youthful province, yet most of our youth are unemployed. The percentages have been given in the past, they are horrible. On the streets, joining gangs and involved with drug peddlers, more needs to be done for the future of this province. Our youth are often the most vulnerable individuals in our society. The department has trodden on the loyalty of your supporters to advance your own interests. You neglect most vulnerable and continue to walk to the sound of trumpets as if you have accomplished something. Our communities are in trouble and they are fed up. Our highest deeds come from helping lowest people. But if you can't, then I urge you at least allow them to help themselves. The DA believes that opportunity is the vehicle through which all South Africans can be empowered to live lives that they value, to pursue their dreams and to develop their full potential. This belief lies at the core of our vision of an open and equal opportunity society for all. 
It goes without saying that the Department of Social Development is mandated to deal with the harsh realities of poverty, homelessness, and unemployment, which amongst a very a variety of factors are as a result of the economy that has degenerated to the stage of almost total collapse. Yes, the current pandemic has made the bad situation worse. Speaker, the social ills like the cruel gender-based violence, drug and alcoholic abuse that is rampant in our communities are developing into a social pandemic of outrageous proportions. It should be obligatory on the social development department to develop programs working with NGOs that can identify the causes and solutions to these challenges. It should be abundantly clear that as much as the financial resources are essential, it is not always a lasting or sustainable solution to the social problems. One cannot just throw money at the problems and hope that they will go away. The ECDs in the province, like we heard from the MEC, this very important service to the communities was ordered to close on the 18th of March, 2020, in trying to curb the spread of coronavirus. This decision was challenged in the Houghton High Court, which ruled that the ECDs should remain open and not on a plan for reopening as long as they complied with the health and safety requirements. This facility of ECDs, wherever they are found, are very, very important that we cannot gainsay. Some ECD centers suffered loss of income since they relied on the fees paid by parents. Some children suffered neglect since eating at the ECD was the main source of food to some of them. Some ECDs were forced to remain closed due to their non-compliance to COVID regulations. And there is a high number of unregistered ECDs in the province as the MEC has already alluded to that. Going back to the situation of unemployment amongst our youth, one may ask why so many of them are unemployed. There are a variety of reasons. I've already mentioned some of them. But I think it's a great pity that the MEC for Education is not here today. Because I would say, I think the time has arrived for us in the Free State in particular to revisit the content of our education in schools. We have got to provide our children with skills, skills that they can use when they leave school. Imagine if this cohort of children who have even gone beyond grade 12, had skills of a sort, had trades of a sort, they would never run hungry. Because anybody who has got a trade will never go hungry. They would be providing for themselves. It is for this reason that I humbly would like to request the MEC for Education to look into the possibility of revisiting the content of our education, particularly in the free state. I thank you very much, Madam Speaker. Thank you.
Thank you, Honourable Member. Honourable MEC uh, Brown. Honourable Speaker, Nezaneli Sifuba, Honourable Deputy Speaker, Honourable Premier of the Free State Province, Masisi Ntombela, Honourable Members of the Executive Council, Members of the Free State Provincial Legislature, allow me to further acknowledge the Chair of Chairs, Chief Whips and Chairpersons of various portfolio committees, Executive Mayors, Speakers and Councillors, we have one here in the room today, Councillor Chakani, the Director General, and Heads of Department and Senior Management in all sphere of government, representatives of the NPOs, ECDs, the broader civil society, representatives of the media houses, the gallery at large, listeners who are connected by various modes of media, including social media platforms, esteemed guests, good afternoon. Honourable Speaker, allow me to appreciate the opportunity granted to me by this distinguished House to contribute to the debate of the Department of Social Development, as tabled by Honourable MEC Kabati. Honourable Speaker, I feel very honoured and fortunate to contribute to the debate of the Department as it deals with many social ills, a Department that intends to enable the poor and the vulnerable society to ensure a better life for themselves. The Department has a firm commitment to build a caring society. Honourable Speaker, whilst preparing to participate in today's debate, naturally I had to turn to research current affairs and the future of the department and the role of social development in South Africa. As I was reviewing various research papers, journals, I came across a paper written by a young lady called Leila Patel, which she prepared for the University of Johannesburg. She writes, and I quote, in the South African context, South Africa achieved its independence in 1994 after more than 300 years of colonialism and apartheid. The new democratically elected government inherited a racially divided society with over half of the black population defined as poor. Poverty was most prevalent in rural areas, 60% and among women and children, with more than half of female-headed households being poor High rates of child poverty are associated with malnutrition, with 38% of children in the poorest quintile and 27% in the second poorest quintile suffering from stunting. These trends reflect as the race-based geography of apartheid and race-based policies of the past. The new government also inherited a racially segregated welfare system that favoured a white welfare elite through the provision of expansive social services and benefits to whites and a residual, residual system for blacks. Resistance to white minority rule and racial capitalism was marked by constant demands for political, economical and social inclusion and for the human rights of all South Africans in common society. These demands shaped the nature and content of our constitution, honorable speaker, that was adopted in 1997. And it recognizes common citizenship, universal adult suffrage, a multi-party democracy, a free press, and a judicial review of government. Honorable, honorable um, MEC, could you please pause? I want to address this matter in case when you finish, um, the house will be empty. There is this tendency in the house of members just leaving the house before we finish with the business of the day. Honorable members, it shows disrespect to the public and the members that have come to join this house. As we said, we are taking the parliament to the people, the legislature to the people. There are people who are watching these proceedings as you are presenting and debating the budgets. The members of this house are leaving one by one, leaving the guests who have come to join them. It is wrong. 
I want to raise it now. I could have let you finish. But the problem is that when you finish, we could be having more empty seats. I want to register it. You need to reconsider what you are doing in the future. Please proceed, Honorable MEC. No, thank you, Honorable Speaker. With that quote, Honorable Speaker, thus is the structure of social development as a sector in the South African economy and society. This is not the words of the African National Congress in trying to grandstand in this house, but it is a reality. This is our history and the reality of the work that we have to do to fix the past and continue to do and which is continuous at hand until we bring the Gina coefficient to an acceptable level and until we meet the targets for poverty alleviation. Honorable Speaker, in 1994, the social security budget catered for 3 million South Africans. Now, more than 17.5 million South Africans benefit from social grants. This is because black people before democracy was not privy privy to social security budget. Honorable Speaker, through you, allow me to remind the House of the role of social development in the country and this beautiful province of the free state, in which its laws have been thoroughly reviewed and championed by the ANC-led government. The Department of Social Development addresses and forges partnerships through which various vulnerable individuals, groups, and communities become capable and self-reliant participants in their own development. This mandate is articulated in the Social Development Bill. Other pieces of legislation further define, define the department's mandate. A nonprofit organization act of 1997 establishes administrative and regulatory frameworks for NPOs. The Older Persons Act of 2006 established a framework for empowering and protecting older people. The Children's Act 2005 sets out principles relating to the care and protection of children. And the Prevention of Treatment and Substance Abuse Act 2008 regulates substance abuse services and facilitates the 2019 estimates of national expenditure. The 1998 White Paper on population policy for South Africa is aimed at promoting sustainable development for all South Africans. Honorable Speaker, you may agree that this is a mammoth task for such a department. Since 1994, the distribution of social grants has increased very considerably, contributing to improved income levels in poor households. Allow me to provide data in the free state context. During 1996, the total population size of the free state of women between the ages of newborn to 19 was 17.1%. Male, 25.4%. Sorry, female, 25.4%. Male, 17.1%. A percentage of the total free state population, which has increased by 3.2% in 2001, and further increased by 7% in 2011 and later in 2016 by 8.3%. Number of people living with disabilities in the free state are 9.6% males and 12.3% females. New births and entering old age have sought deepened support from the sector. Having taken the analysis into consideration, science shows us that this department has aligned its budget strategies with analytics. The alignment on women, youth, elder persons shows the focus on this budget. Honorable Speaker, we'd like to thank you, Honorable Kabate, and your team for considering the numbers and the signs into your budget preparations. And as we align our budgets in its demand, it's the way the department will not over or under budget, which brings about efficiencies that we've called for. With this said, the EFF raised the issue of ECDs. Child support grant receives 69% of the budget, which means the correct focus is being placed on young people. The old age grant, as was also discussed and debated, at 21%. So we can show that this department hasn't thumbs up the budget, but dealt it through science. Honorable Speaker, this department is at the center of socioeconomic transformation. 
It is this ANC-led government that's worked so hard to ensure that more than 94% of our people have access to water. 87% have access to sanitation, 84% have access to electricity, and 71% of South Africans have refuse removed from their homes. Honorable Speaker, houses were built for free since 1994 because of the African National Congress. <laughs> this is why the ANC-led government has to continuously pay catch up or play catch up to ensure that we continue to bring dignity to the people of our country. Social development is not only about welfare. It is a large job driver, Honorable Speaker. And apart from the old apartheid method of social welfare, the Department of Social Development has a great developmental component, component with the NPO sector. Throughout South Africa, political evolution, non-governmental organizations have played a vital role in supporting the country's development, doing so by delivering critical services to the disenfranchised majority, advocating the rights-based governance, policies and laws, and holding the government accountable for its legal and development responsibilities. The role, strategies, and capabilities capacities of NGOs, as well as the resources supporting their work, have shifted into the National Development Plan. The National Development Plan charts a new strategic path, not only for NGOs, but for civil society at large, which along with the business community is envisaged as a working in partnership with government and bearing and sharing the responsibility for implementing the social compact embedded in that plan. Honorable members, we continue to pride ourselves about significant roles that NGOs plays in our society. Secondly, they assist governments to reach out to citizens who may not easily have access to government services. Thirdly, sustaining non-profit organizations is vital to an economy owing the diverse range of essential goods and services they offer. Honorable Speaker, we want to reaffirm our commitment to continue to resolve funding model challenged by the, the sector and we remain resilient that working together with NGOs will assist us to expedite this process. Never be apologetic for the great work that you and your team are doing. MEC Tkabate. On women development, Honorable Speaker, women are caretakers. They are the conscience. Farmers, educators, entrepreneurs, and many in the free state, they are breadwinners. Throughout history, the central role of women in society has ensured stability and progress, as well as long-term development. Thank you, MEC, for liberating women to emancipate themselves and become free and financially free with the projects that you are implementing in your department. We, when we talk about radical economic social transformation, this is a tangible example of how you have implemented a strategic resolution of the African National Congress by taking, we, taking women out of their boxed-in role to now have access and be a player in this economy. On, on social workers, honorable speaker, the role of social workers is critical as an essential service during disaster management. Workers on the front line require trauma debriefing and assistance with post-traumatic stress order symptoms. Families who have lost loved ones due to COVID-19 require bereavement counseling and support in dealing with their loss. Many people dealing with stress as a result of job losses, living in confined spaces with no access to outdoor areas, change routines and constrained daily activities. Social workers have valuable skills that we will be useful in addressing these psych psychosocial problems. Anrul Tabate, I wish to congratulate your department for your unwavering support to, by providing social workers to the community of the free state. On early childhood development, Honorable Speaker, the department launched an early childhood development employment stimulus relief grant, which is supported by the Presidential Employment Stimulus Initiative as part of the Department of Social Development's intervention to assist early childhood development services by cushioning them against the impact of this pandemic. I must reiterate 
that the sector is working together with relevant partners in ensuring su successful implementation of this grant. Members, I find it befitting to quote President Cyril Ramaphosa during his State of the Nation address when he reminded us that if we, and I quote, if we are to break the cycle of poverty, we need to educate the children of the poor. Honorable members, we are not oblivious to the fact that food inadequacy and hunger is still a challenge in the country and in the province. Thank you, Honorable MEC Tabati. You know, I must reiterate that yes, the ANC has provided food parcels, but I can tell you, if a white business person who owns ShopRite and Checkers or pick and pay delivers food parcels to the poor, the DA will applaud and say, ah, oh, shame, I thought that was so kind and thoughtful. The white monopoly capitalists who funds their campaigns in billions also provide food parcels, but they'll never accept that the ANC has introduced it, and they'll never accept that the ANC is the leader of society across all classes. We are the party for all South Africans. Honourable Speaker on Living with Disabilities, three days ago we were commemorating the Human Rights Day and the World Down Syndrome Day. The Human Rights Day rem remembers and honours those who fought for the rights and liberty that all South Africans relish today, whilst World Down Syndrome Day is a global awareness initiative that has been backed by the United Nations since 2012. Down syndrome is a genetic disorder caused when an abnormal cell division, division results in extra genetic material from a chromosome. Down syndrome causes distinct facial appearance, intellectual disability, and developmental delays. It may be associated with thyroid or heart disease. Let me, let me remind the House Honourable Speaker that all of us have a role to play in enlightening ourselves about the barriers and challenges faced by persons with intellectual disabilities. It is also significant that we listen to the voices of the people with disabilities and continue to offer much needed support in recognizing a need to continue to support and promote the well-being of all citizens in this province, the department through disabled citizens cease from alcohol and substance abuse, as well as desist from the abuse of women and children in particular. Poverty and homelessness. The Department of Social Development allocated an amount of 1.442 billion in 21-22, 1.45 billion in 22-23, 1.454 billion in 23-24, and over the medium-term expenditure framework, the department will be spending a total of 4.352 billion. Honourable Speaker, before I conclude, let me just also humbly talk about one aspect that Honourable Mamiki Tabate has done for this province on homelessness. If I can just quickly get to that. Honourable Speaker, at the beginning and at the pronouncement of the first lockdown of Level 5 regulations, Honourable Tabate and the Honourable Premier Masisi Ntombela of this province made a very direct and decisive decision that there would be not one homeless person roaming the streets of the Free State. Communication with every municipality started. Every MSC was allocated to municipalities and we had created shelters in state facilities to address those living on the streets. We worked with religious-based organizations to adopt children where substance dependent. We assisted them by providing them with shelter, social services, rehabilitation services, food and clothing. MEC, I salute you and our honorable premier and your department for those who participated, all municipalities who came to the call, private sector, non-profit organizations and civilians in ensuring that there was not, not one homeless individual roaming the streets of this province during the lockdown. In conclusion, honorable speaker, Successive research studies have found that social grants have positive developmental impact and that they facilitate human capital through development, improved access to health, nutrition and education. 
They're also aid job searches. They are positively associated with higher success rates in finding employment and improve the productivity of workers in households and in receipt of a grant as well as support household livelihood activities. These social grounds empower and improve the welfare of recipients in their households as a whole. We continue to address the challenges in this, in this uh, sector, gender-based violence, poverty and inequality. Henceforth, we will continue to support the initiatives by this department. No other party than the African National Congress will consider you, will plan with you, will change laws for you. We will most certainly not arrogant. We are most certainly not arrogant. We have changed the legislation the mo for the most marginalized, marginalized. We have showed results in targets and numbers. Honorable Speaker, I hereby, as the ANC, we support your departmental budget vote, MEC Kabate, decisively and irrevocably so. Aluta continua, my MEC. Kia leboa, I thank you. Thank you, Honorable MEC. The Honorable on MEC may now reply. Thank you very much, uh, Speaker. And let me thank the Chairperson, Honorable Member Meko, MEC Buluan, Honorable Saramuliliki, and Honorable uh, MEC Khadija Brown for positive inputs where one is able to draw strength to continue to work in this department that is even emotionally charging. The unfortunate thing is that the people who are When we, we assist, it is, all, it is exactly that. We assist, we subsidize the services that we are giving. And yes, 17,000, 17 rand is not enough. But if he sits with me in a legislature and adopts a budget and comes here and complains about a budget that he has adopted, I, I don't know what he's trying to do. Anyway, he, he also knows that uh, the 17 rand per day for meals in an ECD center is not the only money given to subsidizing children. He knows that that 17 rand is for 264 days. When you multiply it with 264 days, is 4,488 per child, over and above a grant that was received by a parent. We help to build the ECDs. We help to furnish and help the ECDs with educational toys. Educational toys, so that they could be developed in in terms of uh, their skills. It's in terms of boy. We are not allowed. We are not allowed to ECD one. Good Lord. Currently, the president has announced a stimulus package that is going to help the workforce that is in the ECD that has not, uh, uh, that has been getting minimal money that are being paid through the parents' fees. They are going to be, 8,000 of them are going to be helped that they should get a salary. Oh, I raised them all. Government, I want to tell you, I want to
at the moment we are building, at the same time, maintaining and renovating the ECDs. Honorable Nanyan, what's a king one is, but I'm going to go to this budget vote to get in. Speaker, Deputy Speaker, Reswanela ho fa ba tshwa ba training. Yo o lo ho hola a ho hola ka dintho tse nna ke sa buang ka tsona. O tshantse a bua ka dintho tso ke di present ileng today. Ke kila ka bua ka ntwa tsa yeng sinna. In the budget vote that I presented here today, rona re ile ra dikena tsa lona. Mo hlanelele lwantsa khotso mo rapela la bala moleleka. Rona re la ka dikena. Re ile ra dikena ha malema antsa khamana le dalimpof Bela ka dikena ra bua ka tsona o batla nta bensa ntse sa buika budget vote Honorable member Duke o nku sa bhloko because o mutwa mohol and ka uraka ke batla go hlompha Marie ya gore o ngolwe speech o eme mo o tlo bua maka ke ke sona ka tsantse ke reng wena o le mutwa mohol o ka e o tsui e se joal as usual. Order, order, honorable members. Honorable member uh, Lituka, auto presenter, the number of the Senate mo hore eh, on child care, re, 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 re only 38, 38%. What is it? What is it? What is it? That 38% was for a quarter. Yeah, how one's a way not to challenge the COVID. The ECD, the way to a quarter. You know what? I'm going to go. I can say, hey, I'm going to go. I'm going to go. I'm going to go. I'm going to go. Issue of the food parcel. I tell you, took a lot of criticize and food parcel because what horror! I saw it's a door to door. I can't even hear the lapa. Most now the high cab are limping past the poor guy. Get over it! I saw it. Get a hold at the bush. And red a dollar refer party community zarona. The succulent the lapa. Renal yo naturally the bail twelve point eight million aside, Eco Yahudi Community Nutrition Center, who to Sabana by Snang La Haika by his help, even a receiver or unemployment in a Dakar Chabasaro. Because Basa se bezi, ha hona or regale la hore, wana atu a kaharang to a yaskolo asaja. Harino litel la hore wana ha to scolo, ebe has been a lo jai. We will continue giving those food parcels. We will continue assisting through the CNDCs. And why COVID? When the receiver my pillow, Abba and the receiver my pillow, Abba so you babon. Why now over to our even near the booth? Or wrong ways, the one of us in Barracha was around to sit in at the refugee. Hey, when I can watch over, or can I visually moon and all trouble or trouble at Laurie? A Ronald is scared, I saw it. Covid is a yard challenge. Speaker, what even in Pekka on the one I have, Kim Pekki level here. I man, I conjure. Uh -uh. Let me thank all who came today to support both COCTA and social development budget vote. Let me thank the principal of Lenora uh, Latut, together with the educators and the SGB, for agreeing to accommodate us today for this uh, budget vote. As I'm thinking, um, all, all of them, 
I also need to note that uh, the Secretary General of the SGBs, uh, Mr. Tabang Mutlong, is also in the house today. I want to appreciate the presence of Metoko from the National Lottery. The National Lottery has a in the free state. Rektatao Loncha, 10 beautiful state of the art ECDs built by Lotar. Very soon, we will be opening an old age home in Tabanchu, built by National Lotar. <laughs> Let me also appreciate uh, the presence. Yeah, uh, Dr. Temba Matlo from Sasa, uh, who is with us here. Sasa, you must also continue giving people who do not have food, food. Uh, uh, speaker, we want to appreciate the beautiful setting of the legislation uh, here today. And I want to thank all my colleagues who have supported and uh, thank you very much. Thank you. thank you, Honorable MBC, Honorable Members. The reply by the Honorable MBC concludes the debate on vote seven, social development. Uh, Honorable members, that brings us to the end of the business of the House today. The House shall now adjourn until Thursday, the 25th, March 2021, at 10 o'clock in Putaditaba. And the business of the House shall be the consideration of the budget votes, one, education, and two, health. Um, Honorable members, uh, I'm advised that all the honorable members and the guests seated in the chamber will proceed to Block H Hall, where the lunch will be served. The guests seated in the overflow, my key, I duly requested to remain where they are seated as their lunch will be served in the same venue. And indeed, Thank you, honorable members and all the guests who have taken their time to come and be part of these proceedings here today. We are humbled. Thank you, honorable members. This house is adjourned.